Welcome, dirty peasants, to episode 69 of Warwood Gazette, the Amphibia Podcast. Nice. <laughs> this week, we'll be discussing shipping. I'm your host, the Maticon, and join me today, we have Nick. What's up? Pickle. Hey, good to be back. Impact. Yo, it's good, everybody. And Sun's Fury. Hello, everyone. Okay, this is January 6th, 2023. And uh, we haven't recorded since November, and I still haven't uploaded the previous three episodes on, <laughs> as, of, as of now. But I will, I'll get to it. And if you're listening to this, that means I did. <laughs> um... So we covered all the theme song stuff. We covered all of the episodes. We're sort of just going into like, I'm sort of just making up topics as we go along now. Um, <laughs> we still have the journal stuff. That's we'll, we'll cover that. We'll dissect it. I have the journal in my hand and I'll thoroughly read it when I get time. But today we're talking about shipping and, uh, We'll try and give you the history of, you know, we'll we'll, we'll break down what we what happened on the show. We'll ha we'll mention what happened outside the show, and what was discussed by the fandom at the time. So if you are, if you weren't part of the fandom, like early on, we can we can give you a reliable uh, timeline of <laughs> what happened over the years and. Don't worry, it's not, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, it's crazy, but it's like it's not like the negative kind of crazy. It's 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 a very it's a very shipping in amphibia is like it's like a storm localized in one area. It's it's kind of like Buffalo, where 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 it's like. It's pretty tame around Buffalo or before the lake, and then you know what once the once it picks up over the water, then it, it it's 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 worse. The shipping in amphibia is is it's not that bad. I, I feel like if you're in the if you're for any amphibia fans, I feel like oh, there's so much shipping. No, it, it's 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 pretty tame. You. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is nothing. <laughs> and I guess to start off for context, like before we get into season one shipping, I feel like it's important to note that like at the time when Amphibia first came out, um, Star vs. the Forces of Evil had just ended, and that was a very um. There's a lot of like love triangles and shipping and ship wars and uh those of us who survived were uh <laughs> just wanted to rest <laughs> the endings of all time so it was one of the endings of all time <laughs> and uh so for, for i'm just giving i'm just giving listeners like context like when amphibia started it's like oh the main character is a girl and the other main character is a frog, and they're best friends, and nothing more. And you know, we all liked that so much. We actually did love that. It's like peace, peace of mind. And uh, but what's funny about season one is that it kind of had like the most like uh, canon shipping stuff. And it, it started off as early as, um, Hop, Hop, Pop, and, uh, sorry, Hop Luck, where, um, I, I guess, Pickle, why, why don't you tell us what happened in, in, in Hop Luck? So, Hop Luck follows Hop Pop's 
kind of sad attempts. Ah, uh, no, Although, no, no, I mean, that, that's hot pop and luck. This is just hop luck. Oh crap. Okay, uh, Nick. <laughs> Explain the what shipping. To hop luck. <laughs> Quick, you better answer correctly or be forever shamed. Oh. No, okay, okay. I'll, like, ask, I'll like, okay. Wait, Nick, hop, do you remember? Hop, do you remember? Did hop? Oh yes, yes, yes. Quit. Okay, I, I, my brain wasn't working here. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that that's where God, I got that's terrible. But that's where Anne pretty much sells away Sprig's future to Maddie, right? Correct. For uh, for pizza dough. It's like a quiz for, show. No, because they're trying to make the pizza, and yeah, it was, this is a quiz quiz show. <laughs> I I gotta see who 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 uh, whoever answers correctly earns my love. <laughs> And respect, <laughs> which isn't much, but you you need all you can get in these times. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So in 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 Hoplock, um, yeah. So uh, basically, we get Spratty. That's Sprig is engaged to Ivy for I forget how long. Like, like most, the whole, like half a season. The whole season, pra- no, I think the, like literally the whole season because the hoplites like very, very early on in season one, and then they officially split. It. Literally, I think right, pretty much right before the end of season one, like, like it, it's like, like right before the end of season one. I'm not even joking. Oh, I'm looking at so. Uh, yeah. Cursed is episode seventeen. So yeah, right at the end. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, so technically... And if I'm... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Nick. I was just going to say, if I remember correctly, I think Hop Luck is like episode three, season one or something. Like It's it like is. very early on, this whole thing gets set up. And like, I can't remember if there's much mention of it after like... You, you know, if there's much mention of it between Hop Luck and, and, uh, and the curse. Like, I, I don't remember there being anything. Maybe, maybe a few jokes here and there, but really not much of anything. There is a joke in, uh, in dating season. Yeah, there we go. When like, I think like um, Sprig mentions that she that he is engaged to Maddie, and then Hop Pop just oh. doesn't care. <laughs> I don't just didn't it's care. Spend of money. Yeah. Chad Pop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so yeah, Spratty was like Spratty was the thing, and uh, I mean, are there any Spratty shippers in the chat? <laughs> The fandom. I feel. I feel like if you ask in the fandom, it's gonna be all crickets. Like I'm like, I'm trying. Oh, I'm trying to remember. There were. 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 But no, there are fair, there are fair few nowadays. I mean, I know. And here's the thing. At some point. Oh, go ahead, pickle. At some point, I know that Matt was entertaining the idea of having like a, a love triangle between oh, Maddie and yeah. Sprig, and like a will they won't yeah, they yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. that never happened. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, yeah, he took God. Uh, yeah, because I think like they mentioned that they were just trying to sort of diverge away from any like you know what i mean and any tropes that usually happen of tv and romance i don't know tv is just so absorbed with like having conflicts that, <laughs> that they will create something as cheap as that and like god i think it really was for the best even so the spratty stuff never really went anywhere for a while to the end at least you know we'll be going into later i mean at least we just got the at least we just got what was actually like you know worth it like the actual meat of these relationships I will say that I think Spratty does definitely have it had I think it had potential after Cursed when we got more about Maddie, but like since Sprig isn't really in Wartwood like for like a long time when we get to like season two and then we come back and then season three, you know, like it's so much in and out that once like Sprig commits to Ivy, it's like that's it. There's no like yeah, there's no turning this turning this course around now. Yeah, she missed her chance. <laughs> like, yeah, honestly. No, but yeah, no, God, you saying that just made me realize how 
just so much, so much, so much of his like relationship. No, literally, his relationship was just like a long distance one the entire for, for most of the for pretty much the whole show. Like, so yeah, he gets some moments of her, but literally, like, like the whole time he's always just out of what we're doing something of and so it's like oh, we'll, he rarely gets any time yeah, yeah oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, okay, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. get to this probably Dang, it's, it's so hard not to talk about it it's so I hard know. not to talk about it it's so hard not to mention it like um so should we should we talk about hop sylvia before we get to spryvy because i feel like spryvy will take up a bit more time yeah okay does yeah. anyone want to add anything else about uh spratty um first was yes. mid so i had to say it I've never got to say it. <laughs> whoa, 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 No, you don't get to say that. I wasn't expecting that take. <laughs> I had to say it. I just had to say it. All right, now, now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. Wait, wait, what did, uh, what did Pickle say? Are you being... Freddy being... <laughs> wait, what? Wait, how would you say Pickle? Relationship being, like, simple and not having a ton of drama. Kind of doesn't make it bad. It just kind of makes it normal. No, that, no that's true. That's true. I, I just, I just mean that whole episode. I just mean the episode. <laughs> I like. I just mean the episode. <laughs> I'll, I'll give them. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. Um, Sasha's angels. That was great. That was a great follow up to curse. I'll give you that. But I don't know. I, I just was not a fan of curse. Like I'm like, I'm watching that. I'm like. All right, this was the episode of all time. That's all I'm gonna say. Whoa! <laughs> uh, well, I didn't. We're gonna keep the, the the one of the blanks of all time thing running this episode. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. Okay. I mean, it works. Nick, <laughs> like we're it. gonna we're gonna discuss this another time. Don't, don't... All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll... Another battle for another day. Another battle. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be like the the motto for this whole episode. <laughs> for this. You guys gonna take us outside. <laughs> We have to pick our. I have to pick my pick these battles <laughs> wisely. Um, I, I guess we'll go to something more uh, unanimous. Hop Sylvia, and it's Sylvia. The reason I say it's unanimous is because I'm telling you it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, this was one I had like zero problems with. I mean, like, like really, all the episodes that focus on it, pretty damn good, in my opinion. Yeah. So, like, I think. Hop Hop, yeah, Hop Hop and Sylvia Romance, I think it's only brought up in, I guess, Hop Hop and Muck, where, you know, we spend an entire episode of Hop Hop, like, trying to win her over by dancing, by in a dance-off, which is, uh... Yeah. I mean, okay, I'm just, I'm so happy that we get, like, a, I don't know, like, old people romance is cute, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's yeah, no, like because I, I feel like a lot yeah. of people I feel like yeah, because you no, know, that, that that's the thing about it though. Because honestly, it, it, I don't know, just looking back, it is it does feel like I don't know, it, it's weird. It, it, it does feel like Amphibia breaks a lot of romance tropes was like I feel like I just think about so many times and um think so many times like, you know, old love happens in T V shows. I sort of they always just focus on how gross it is. You know what I mean? Just how gross it is to see like your grandma and gr- your your grandma, grandma kissing or something like when it's like, come on, they can fall in love and they can fall in love. Like let them. Like I mean, still, they, like, funny. I don't know. They still make it gross. It's funny because the, the journal hill. makes like Oh, it's still gross. Well, literally, that's the example of King of the Hill. Like if you guys know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But like, um but this not man, it's super sweet. And like, God, um yeah, hop pop and lock just honestly the fact that like it's one of my favorite season one episodes, literally it, it helps. It just boosts the shit for me because like when I think about hop pop and luck, I just think of like that montage in the middle of the episode, you know, where the planters just start dancing, teaching Hop Hop the dance. I'm like, I don't know, I just love that shit. I felt like in the in the journal, like they do end up making that joke about it being gross. So like Wait, That's wait, who, who, who said it was gross? Who said it was gross? Was, it, it was, was Anne? Anne. It was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why? Blue. I don't understand. She Blue Anne. Helped she helped, like, what? Isn't she a shipper? Like, where did that come from? Like, it makes sense in the context. I think it's, like, Hop Hop is going, like, explaining things a little bit too, too far. You know? I think that's, I think that's the... I forget the exact entry it is. I think it's when Anne, like, joins the Resistance or whatever. Right before Commander Anne, it's like that in between. So, oh wow, I'm like I'm That's actually heartbroken. 
that that is a betrayal that is a betrayal to i i can't even i don't even know the say like <laughs> she at hot like what what and boon Choi and savisa boon Choi, that is the most disappointing thing i've ever heard about you i can't even believe it although in the actual episode the whole gross thing is more about them just being really weird than it is about them being old was it ever yeah like what's yeah, the like, you know, like freaky did, did, did dance and everyone gross? gets grossed out by it oh they made okay, it I guess weird. That happened, but like i feel like their dance was just super cringy but like everything else though was super sweet like I, but i don't know it feels like such a betrayal because like, that episode's so sweet like she's literally just trying to help her grandpa find some love like how did she become a hater oh i mean i love how sprig like wingman's at the end with like playing the fiddle Yes, yes, yes. Like it's it's just so it's so, so charming, sweet man. Yeah, yeah. Like they're all just I don't know. That's just that's just the kind of stuff I love about the Flanders family. Like literally, that whole they're just there to support their grandfather, and like no one's like you, you, you old people kissing you. <laughs> oh man, I love and <laughs> remember Monroe. <laughs> oh my God. Oh Who's just God, Gary yeah, from like, Pokemon? Yeah, Monroe. God. Yeah, like that was like so in Hop Pop like there was like that old blue frog, like apparently was Hop Pop's rival, even though like Hop Pop like embarrasses him so bad he doesn't show up until season three in the background. Like <laughs> he's a background <laughs> character. Yeah. I think I, I think Man he doesn't even like, speak a word. Yeah, I, I think he gets to do something in like the three armies. I think there's just like five seconds of him getting punched in the face and that's it. Okay. Yeah, literally, like... God. <laughs> he got annihilated. Like, no, wait, no. And doesn't... I know this is like off-topic, sort of, but like... Doesn't... Isn't, isn't Sal basically like a reused model of like... Of, um... I forgot his... What, 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 I just... I don't know how... Yeah, Monroe, like... I don't know if they look so similar, actually. Like, it's off-topic, but like... Did anyone ever, did anyone ever notice that? Oh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't let me see. Oh, no, no, I, I don't did. think they look the same. Sal's gray, right? Or he's gray in the episode, just because you know. It's gray. Like, <laughs> and they both look like older <laughs> yeah, no, like, uh, They both have that little mustachey thing. They got, they got that whisker. They, they got the. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was pretty funny though. They, they invented this. I don't know. They invented this rival character for Hop Hop just for him to like. I don't know. It's just dumb. Just what you put in his perk. Just he got. He just gets cocked so hard that he just disappears for the whole series. Like, I I don't know. That's hilarious. Yeah, and uh, is there anything else we can talk about? For is there anything else you guys want to add for? Hop Sylvia. Uh, damn it. See, this is just one of those. I mean, I guess this is just one of those ones where it's just like hard to come off anything. But I, I mean, Family Fishing Trip was nice, though. You know, we can't forget about that one. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that was the Sprig episode, but like, I don't know. It just had lots of good moments between the two. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, because it, yeah, it, yeah, it showed like how like Sylvia is like inclusion kind of like like it, yeah it changes it's, it's, the dynamic of the family yeah a little bit yeah. like, they, they don't really explore beyond family fishing trip but like they still address it which is nice and uh yeah i think everything i'm thinking of is mostly has to do with sprig it's uh and it's less about shipping it's more about just like parental figures so i i don't i think i've already said it in the past so I'm, yeah I'm, but yeah it's nice to see them still like it, it's nice to see hop hop happy yes amen amen yeah because i think th at this point season love. one i think hop hop lost the stand right i think yeah no I... yeah he did because it the episode he... he meets sylvia is when he's like selling like on the street 
So it's like, I was like, no, was it? No, wasn't it like a corner? No, was it oh, like, yeah, like an yeah, alley? Yeah. It was literally in an illegal alley, bro. Yeah, it was like it wasn't even like it even. He was like illegal. Yeah, he was illegally selling his fruit in an alley. Like that's how low Hop Hop was. <laughs> and then Monroe, Monroe showed up trying to steal his girl. Like, dude, yeah, that was, <laughs> he was at a he was at a low point. He was at a low point that episode. Yeah, I think this was the first like. Now that I'm looking at it, the, all these episodes are pretty close together. Like, Planter's Last Stand, the episode where Hop-Hop lost the stand, was episode 9. And then Hop-Hop and Luck was episode 11. And then Hop Popular was episode 12. So all this, like, losing... Okay, yeah, so it was, yeah. yeah, all this losing the stand stuff was, like, pretty, like, I'm sur- It was, like, pretty, like, close together. Yeah, pretty close together. Yeah, and they're all yeah. interconnected, too, like, People, like, say that season one is, like, not... It, it is episodic, but, like, weirdly enough, there are a lot of episodes that do really just connect and fuse together. You know what I mean? Like, there is there is solid progression going on there in without having to, like, move the characters forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in the sense of, like, literally, like, move them place to place. Like, there are still events connecting to one of them. Eventually, the show will continue to expand that for the next yeah there's lots of great continuity yeah also i do like how everyone in the planter family did like legitimately try to help hot pop like get sylvia in the sense of like and teaches him how to dance and stuff sprig with the fiddle like that was good shit i like that yeah, like, what 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 did po- polly didn't i feel do like anything. polly did some Oh damn! <laughs> I was like, I feel like I was like, I swear, Polly did something, didn't she? But uh, nah, she just nah, danced well. Polly was present. She, she did. Yeah. Oh, she, Polly. she she wore that cute little top hat. Yeah, well, that cute little yeah. Then, then, then she danced with Anne at the end, didn't she? Yeah. So okay, there's she, that. I, yeah, I think okay, because I think Battle of the Bands, she had a bow, but I prefer the top. Actually, no, this isn't. That's not. It's not related. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was just commenting about how like Polly is like formal wear and in hot pop look was better than the dinner. <laughs> Doing better than Sasha. What was, what was her look in the dinner? Um, it was yeah, just, honestly, it was a, yeah, everyone, everyone... it was a blue bow. Oh, like a blue uh, shiny one. Well, at least she was trying. I'm like Sasha. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we've covered everything for Hop Sylvia um, in season one, at least. But, uh, I, I guess we can talk about Spryby now. Uh, I guess who would like to just talk about Spryby? Any volunteers? I mean, I'll do it. I mean, <laughs> no I one can go. Do I'll it. do it. I mean, all, right, good. all right, go impact. Impact. You got it. All right. So, Spryby, like, to me, one of the things I just I like about Spryby in general is that I think we talk about, like, Sprig and Maddie, like, it's a very like stable ship. There isn't really a lot of like conflict per se between each other outside of like outside influences. You know what I mean? It's I think Adam Kolos described it as like I'm not sure if it was Adam or if it was to get like it was kind of I think it was Matt who described it as like just being that first awkward relationship. Like, you don't know what you're doing, but, like, you're just kind of, like, you're together, but you don't really know what that means, and you're just trying to just work it out. And I don't know. I I really like Spryby. It's a nice static ship in the show that, like, well, it it lacked drama, but it does change, like, throughout the show slowly and surely, especially when we get to, like, their own episode in season three. So, yeah, I like it a lot. They're cute together. And I love that Anne ships them too. It's very funny. All right, thank you, Impact. And yeah, and yeah like um, I guess Nick, do you want to talk about dating season? Oh yeah, no, nah, well honestly, yeah, I just again, I mean, okay, dang, uh, I'm noticing a pattern because I was literally about to say, yeah, one of my favorite episodes of season one, and it's like it's kind of suspicious, <laughs> like the two shipping episodes are some of my favorite, but like, yeah, no, just. I just remember it, it. So yeah, tons of sweet moments between Sprig and Ivy, but it's also just like okay, I can't talk about how funny. Okay, how about how about we we'll just say I, I talk about how funny it is at the start. Okay, 
it's a very hilarious episode. So many funny moments. I love like how Anne and Hop Hop are complete buffoons the whole time, and you just have Polly acting as a straight man, freaking out whatever they do. So I'm gonna give them that. Then Solstice just got like Sprig and Ivy in that episode. Even when like, like, even when. I wasn't sure where the relationship was going. I mean, just just like the beauty of these two sh- knowing each other, like the show didn't hold back on that. I mean, like, you know, just yeah. When when I think dating season, like I I just the one the thing that always pops in my head is just when we're, they're watching all the fireflies rise out of the lake. I mean, it's such a gorgeous moment, and it's just like I don't know. Yeah, it, it just gets you into these two being together. It, it's just no, just. Like, like, it's not too complicated. Like, the plot of the episode's not complicated. Nothing's, like, too complicated or out there. It's just, it just focuses on just being a simple, sweet story between these two, and it does exactly what it needs to. I've heard people critique uh, that part, or not, like, not that part, but just in general, the, like, idea of the episode about being them not wanting to be together, and then ending oh. it with... <laughs> Oh yeah, they want to yeah. be together. I, I'm one of those people. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? I'm kind of indifferent. Yeah. I, no, I mean, I won't lie. Like back when, when we did the podcast recording, I did say like I was like, hmm, they kind of went against the point of the episode, but like, hmm. yeah, <laughs> like um. Mm. No, thumb thumb. You go ahead. You go ahead. Say something. Yeah, I wasn't like a like I like I it, it didn't like ruin the episode for me. I was just like, oh, well, like, I would have liked if they just stayed friends, but then I think Cursed kind of, like, scratched that itch for me. Well, they had, like, kind of, like, Sprig and... I don't want to say Sprig and Maddie, like, reconciling. It's mostly, like, Sprig kind of owning up to the fact, like, owning up to him reject, like, his breakup with, with, uh, Maddie. Um... So it's a little bit different, but it kind of scratched the itch. Like it kind of like had what I was expecting out of out of dating season originally. But yeah, like now I'm kind of indifferent to it because like it never was like a big part of the show. Like yeah, I mean plus yeah, like because yeah. like in the moment it was like, oh, where are they going with this? And we we can I'll save that for later. Um. Actually, yeah. Before we move on, like, um, You're like yeah, impact. Do you want? Uh, oh, I was gonna say like with with um dating season. Like, I felt like the idea of the episode was telling us that like trying to force love upon people isn't like a good thing. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't feel like it was saying that Sprig and Ivy shouldn't. At least from my point of view, it didn't seem like the show was saying Sprig and Ivy shouldn't date. They should just be friends. It felt more like it was saying, hey, trying to force this upon them instead of ha- letting it happen naturally is, like, bad, you know? So, like, I don't know. I always felt like that ending worked for me because Sprig just kind of naturally figures it out, like, just by hanging out with her and then just paying attention to his feelings, you know? Like, it's not forced upon him. So, I don't know. I never felt like it It contradicted that ending to me. I feel like it still worked out. In the- I think I uh, agree with that general vibe. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I think that's totally fair. Yeah, like, when you put it like that, like, don't, don't they have that line where, like, I swear, you know, when they're being defiant to, like, Hop Hop and, like, uh, Felicia, you know, don't, where they say, like, we want to decide our relationship on our own terms or something like that. I can't. I, remember, I just remember there being a line like that, but yeah, I think you guys make a really good point there. Yeah, because like Polly in that episode is just screaming at the characters to like, "Hey, stop trying to force shipping, guys. <laughs> Let it just naturally happen, okay?" Like, because Anne is like, even like Hot Pop and Felicia are like, want to do it for their own selfish desires, but Anne is just doing it because like, she just like thinks it's cute and just trying to force two people to to date when they don't want to like so yeah i don't know i just, I just get the vibe that like yeah like the message still works at the yeah that's fair 
and I guess. Yeah. Oh, uh, pickle. Do you... Yeah, go ahead, pickle. I definitely feel that's the message the episode was trying to send. I don't know if the execution on that was perfect because they really the way they like said it really did feel kind of like you shouldn't you shouldn't uh yeah these two don't want to date the whole time like if they had had sprig appear like more flustered and then the people around him calling him out on it and then him him fervently denying it or something it would have seemed more like the thing he doesn't like about being put together with ivy is that he's being forced but instead they just kind of tack on that he fell in love with her at the very end which is kind of a stranger way of doing it I think, like, if you wanted to find a balance of it, what you could do is just make it so Sprig figures it out in a later episode, you know what I mean? Like, instead of instantly doing it. So then, like, it works with the message of that episode without being self-contained in it, if that makes sense. Like, it just, Sprig naturally figures it out throughout a couple of episodes, and he's like, oh, I might have actually fell in love with her without having Anne or Hot Pop, like, shove that into her shove that to his face, you know? Oh, yeah, I see yeah. what you guys mean. I think... I, I guess what also does... I guess we could also argue what helps a land is like... I mean, I guess there's just that Firefly scene. I mean, I, I think Sprig has that one quick moment where he, look, you know, where he looks at Ivy and really just takes her, in, takes her in at that moment and then... Um, I don't know. I think they... Then they then we, I can't remember what happens after that. Maybe, maybe we cut away. Maybe they finally find them. But, like, something happens that, that interrupts it. So, like... Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you guys. Like, maybe maybe they could have done more than just like a quick joke at the end, right? Just saying that he fell in love with her. But I don't know. I, I think it's, I think I I got to go back to what Thumb said. It just feels like one of those things where it's like, in the moment, you're like, wow, dang, huh? But then like, I don't know. Then like, I don't know. Sprint gets into so many things that it just like, not even just not even just with I, but just with the series as a whole. It's like I don't know, just one of those things where I'm like. Okay, you know, that happened, but there's just so much cool shit. In Sp- I don't know, Spring gets into it. Like, I don't know where I'm going with this, but, like, I don't know. There's just so much stuff that buries it for me that I'm, like, I'm not too bad about. Or I don't know if that makes sense. If I'm picking up what you're putting down, like, Spryby's a side ship anyways. doesn't matter that much. Oh, I mean, I guess so. Because, like, no, I'm thinking about, it's like, like, it's weird how, like, Spryby is, like, the canon ship of the show, and it's like a side ship to the fandom. <laughs> yeah, as I, as I, side ship to the show. Yeah, anyway. It's a side ship to yeah, the show it's, for it's, sure. It's, it's, yeah, because it's, it's, there's no main ship. It, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I mean, it's, all ships in the show like, are side ships. Yeah, sure. Ain't wrong. I mean, like, no, that's yeah. Because if 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 you were forced to pick like a main ship of the show, you'd because like it's, because it's episode like it's like the ship that got the most episodes, or at least like. He's is right. Like seriously, like, I mean, there's so many. There's so many to go over right now. I mean, we can like literally. Can we mention? Um, for example, we've just been talking about dating season. I mean, can we mention like? Yeah. Okay, I guess there's not much to say about like um Cro- Croak and Punisher. Yeah, I, was, like, I wanted to bring it up where it's like that whole episode started off. <laughs> oh <laughs> my like, god! Happens like, because of like, this. that episode. Oh, dude, that episode. My Croak god. And okay, Croak, I okay Croak and Punisher was the was the episode, the most episode. Yeah, the episode, the most <laughs> the season one episode, of like all the time. episode of season one of all time, like the just the season one episode. Like for, <laughs> came and, like, <laughs> like for a long time, <laughs> I considered cracking Mrs. Croker. <sighs> the amphibia episode of all time because i forgot about croak and punishment <laughs> where yeah it's look, just forgetable i'm sorry it's just I mean, it's I, okay. it was it was no. painful i won't i was this is i love amphibia so i'm not trying to be mean but like yeah it was kind of painful recording that episode because we were just like <laughs> long pauses we'd have no idea what talk so about hard. <laughs> and, okay, yeah. and guys but. like think about like when nick and i recorded that episode it was like i think it was like 2021 and we were talking about how, like, like, it's funny, okay, like, Sp- <laughs> Sprig and Anne, be- be- Sprig is so obsessed with Ivy that him and Anne become cops that break and enter into people's homes without a warrant. <laughs> and, like, like, cause, like, a bunch of, like, like, bunch of, like, property damage like they start abusing 
the, the townspeople with their with their false authority. There's that one guy who never shows up again. Gunther shows up again. When? He shows up in the uh the photo of uh Yeah. Battle of the Bands. I I love how I Battle immediately knew Pickle was talking about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, that's yeah, Gunther from oh. from episode from think... season one, episode Third, no, 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 episode thirteen. Yeah, episode thirteen. Like, <laughs> you know, episode. you know, it's not the most memorable episode when yeah. the Thumbaticon doesn't remember which episode it is. Yeah, because I mean, I'll, I'll give it this. I mean, I think Gun. Oh, wait, shoot, I feel like we're definitely going from Cyber, but I also say this before I bring back bring us back to Friday. I mean, I think like the okay, okay, Gunter basically becoming the Incredible Hulk. Now that was memorable. I'll, I'll give it yeah, that. Yeah, Gunter like, was that. the best part of that. Episode. Yeah, that was that. Gunter was the best part. Like <laughs> him hulking out was hilarious, but. Yeah, I guess there was just like the like, I don't know. That was so uh, the premise, the, the surviving premise was so weird. Like, like what happened? Like, like he left it out. No, that was so because he left though. it out because he was going yeah, to give it to yeah. Ivy, and he left it yeah. out, and then Ivy just found it, took it to clean it so he she could give it to Sprig later. And then my like, God, then it just spun up all of that. Yeah, like the that's the chaos that Spivey creates. Oh, but I love it. And remember how, like, like Sprig started, like, freaking out? He had all the Muppet faces. <laughs> oh, oh! Yeah, 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 Okay, I remember that, I remember that, I remember that. Yeah, 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 no, that was good. Um, I'm trying to think. But yeah, I guess there, there was that really sweet scene at the end with, um... You know what Ivy said? She was like, oh, anytime I see it, I'll just know I'm coming, I'll, I'll know I'm coming to you, so... I don't know, I was like, come on, what, what was she or she definitely had a crush on him at that point, right? I mean, come on. Like, yeah, because after they were. Wait, let me Google something. Like, I swear she mentioned that. Like, yeah. she mentioned that, and then she walked away, and then Sprig was just like. I forgot what he did. I, I need to. Re- see, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I need to rewatch. I, wanna, I need to rewatch the video because I'm slipping now. Yeah, she says, like, every time, like, I, like, every time I see it, like, shine, I'll know I'm close to your place. And then, like. <laughs> there it is, yeah. Then Sprig just, yes. I mean, he does something goofy. He does, I remember he did something goofy. I can't remember. Yeah, he's but like, like, like yeah. he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, all love struck. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, there it is. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. And like, <laughs> dude, yeah, damn. Like, Ivy had game, dude. Sprig had no idea what he was doing. And uh, does anyone else want to add anything before we go into uh, end of the year? Does that mean we're we're talking Wait, about and end of the uh, year? Yeah, that's that's where like Spivey becomes canon. Oh right, right. right. Oh, of course it does. <laughs> we're all we're all slipping. We we all need to rewatch Amphibia. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Nick! I can't remember every single ep- episode name. <laughs> Time for a rewatch. <laughs> 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 Just coming up with infinite excuses to have a rewatch. Get the alligator clips. I gotta keep my eyes open. <laughs> Little on the extreme side. Next season of next season of this podcast is just gonna be us rewatching and reacting. <laughs> it's a lot. Boom. Boom. That's how we double our episode count. Boom. Thumb, <laughs> that is how we up double our episode count. You want you want an idea? That's it. We, we double it that way. You can do the episodes. like reactor thumbnail too, like, like, like you making a really shocked face, red circle, red arrow. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! How many views? No, no, yeah, no. Me and Thumb, <laughs> yeah, no. Me and Thumb, we can we can be doing like that. Well, Jack, point. You know me when something's in the center. We're just pointing. <laughs> the... I, I hate how uh, I, I I just I hate how well those videos would perform if I tried them. Yeah, I, I feel like they're totally honest. Do we can literally just boost boost the view counts from? But like uh, add a revenue. But yeah, like end of the year basically ends like Anne's main attraction is getting Sprig to ask Ivy out. Bro. <laughs> well yeah, you gotta have a romantic centerpiece to it all. Drama. I mean Anne was right about that, like the would have been a would have worked. I mean Sprig's like the cutesy guy of the, the town. All the adults love him, so yeah, I think the whole town is shipping them in season one. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just it just makes it all the more funny. But we'll we'll, we'll go get to that later. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a field day of that. But 
Oh my god, yeah. Like the town just loved us too, right? Like, um, I know. Wait, 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 wait. Did they in season? I, I can't remember. Did they? I, I remember them reacting in season two, but did they react in season one? Actually, they, I like, remember them reacting in season counts. in season one. I think. yeah. But like for wait, end of the they? year, once Ivy asked Sprig out. It was. It was more in. Uh, it was more in season three. I think they're actually like a couple. Yeah, because I can't remember. I think when they asked each other, I was more of like a private thing that only like I guess I think only Anne saw. Oh, in season one. Saw, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. See. So maybe oh, they season two. Slipping. Yeah, I'm slipping. Oh, Sylvia, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We gotta rewatch. We gotta rewatch the video. I'm up with only you. Let's rewatch the whole show. Sixty new episodes. Sixty new more gets that episodes. Me and you, like just us live reacting. I Perfect. actually got one of my friends to watch. Like he watched the first episode with me, and he wanted to watch more of it. So like at least I got someone hooked. Hey, oh, let's go! Nice. Let's go! But uh, but yeah, like I think end of the year, um, Ivy ends up asking Sprig out because Sprig has no game, and Ivy does. <laughs> I mean, I mean, isn't I'm not gonna be Chad later on? Yeah, yeah, so you're right. Chad later on. Like, like, he becomes a Chad later on, <laughs> and that's he fine. Just had it, I don't Ch- know. Ch- Chad's aren't born, they're, 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 they're made, <laughs> <laughs> they're made, yeah, yes, they're made. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, was it the adventure in season two that just made him like a bi- no? Because like he came back, no, it's just somebody. Because he he came back home. Then all of a sudden, his riz it was finally there. It was finally there. Like, you see, like, yeah. I have a little bit of a feeling that maybe, just maybe, the difference was the fact that he didn't have a huge amount of pressure weighing on him because Anne is going, oh no, you need to do this, you need to do this, otherwise the party will be I, terrible. I, maybe it's the slightest <laughs> amount of impact. I don't I, know. <laughs> okay, that's fair, that's fair. That's fair, I forgot about that. I mean, the episode was sort of like about how people are a lot worse at stuff that they're normally good at when you force them to do it. Like, Anne's a great with people until you make her plan a party, and Sprig and Ivy are so cute together until you force them to confess, and Hop-Hop's funny until you make him write, stand, write um, until you make him do stand-up. I never noticed off the line. Like, I, I never noticed that. Yeah, actually, I, I never noticed. Yeah, that's, that's a great observation, Pickle. New perspective. Yeah. Wow. Shoot, uh, I mean, I guess I mean, are we all out of Spritey stuff? I mean, no, no, I mean, gotta mention how cute that scene was, though. I mean, just one, one, when the confession finally happened, yeah, um, she's like Ivy's pulling her, head, like, her like hat yeah. down, and yeah, Hello. and then Sprig does it too, and then they just run off laughing. She, that was sweet as hell. I really like that. I think, I think Anne's face there when she reacts to it is the face of basically everybody. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, uh, it's like so out of like off model, but it's like. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so adorable. It's like. Yeah, because I think, I think what was so great about it was just like. I don't know. I feel like we're just. We're just primed by all the, all the sitcoms we've seen to like just expect this to not go anywhere. But then like. You know, it's there. It's in our faces. It's confirmed, and it's not going away. And that's just like, yeah, like, like, literally, we're just, we're, we're just squealing, just, just like, yeah, it's crazy. And we're also just happy because it's a happy moment, and we get yeah. to be happy for Sprig. No, yeah, you're not, you're not wrong, you're not wrong. God, no, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's a great moment. Yeah, and this, and this cute moment is a. Uh... Unfortunately, like overshadowed by uh, by the uh, I guess appearance of Sasha. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I guess we've talked mostly about like show like canon stuff. I I guess like obviously when 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 Sasha showed up in re- reunion, there was like Sasha and. Are like shipping because uh, those were the only two humans we saw on the sh- <laughs> that were on the show. Yeah, um, yeah. that we know. <laughs> like we don't know Marcy, so like we can't really ship her with Anne yet. So it's just like, well, Sasha's the only option. I yeah, and, and and keep in mind, like there was there wasn't too much uh, 
there wasn't too much like Sasha and stuff because like, well, first of all, like the the community was pretty small th- at, at this time, and also because Sasha was like the antagonist of season one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah like, like, there, there wasn't much. There wasn't much shipping, for obvious reasons. But <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Sasha it felt Shan's like the hard sell. Sasha is yeah. a hard sell because it's just like Sasha is an antagonist. She's toxic as, as hell, and like it. It's it's hard to like. You have to kind of be assuming that Sasha's gonna, you know what I mean, like to to make this ship work because it's like, it's a hard sell. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very I mean, very hard sell. It's a hard sell, and we hadn't seen Sasha's good side yet, so it, yeah, we didn't even know. Well, if she's good, what does she seem like? What is she like? What is her personality in that case, even? Yeah, it just like, felt so. Into it a bit. Oh, Nick, you go, you go. I mean, oh, no, I was some people. Say, like, I think, yeah, I was gonna say honestly, I think in, in some way it just felt taboo to even like you know honestly that, that's sort of the energy I got from the community when it just came to like I mean there wasn't much of the community, but I, just when I saw like some discussions about it, it almost just it, you know it just wasn't very supportive of that ship even existing because I I mean again like like Tom said like I think a lot of this community was just made up of like people who experienced ship war upon ship war upon ship war upon ship war so when they're when they just saw like another potential ship with two really toxic girl or no sorry not two really toxic girls but like just a potential toxic ship like i feel like just a lot of people were just were not like they just did not want to engage with it at all and and also keep in mind yes. like the show at this time presented the relationship between Anne and sasha as something that was very uh like something that needed to be like the, like the, fixed. The, yeah, fix the fixed. status quo between Anne and yeah. Sasha. Like, like it was very clearly not like a healthy relationship at this time. Like a healthy friendship. So it was kind of like hard to like ship them at this point in time. Yeah, Sasha and like a. It's. I feel like again, like you have to kind of be assuming that Sasha is gonna grow character because I think there are hints. That Sasha has like a good side to her in um in Prison Break, like she still wants to find the girls and and keep them safe in some way, but she, you can tell there's a, there's a lot of like there's a lot of bad shit going on like thought process wise with her, you know. So it feels like I feel like Sasha and even obviously never becomes canon. It it definitely feels like a long term investment thing. Like you gotta hope this changes because <laughs> if it don't, yeah, then, like <laughs> this doesn't work out. I mean... <laughs> The appeal for a lot of people when it comes to ships like enemies to lovers in any in any sort of way is kind of like where they can go starting from like the awful the most awful because it's like makes it more interesting when you get to see two people who hate each other or for some reason they've got to disconnect slowly grow to like know each other and then change their minds especially when you throw in stuff like them being childhood friends that's true yeah you know i I think yeah i don't know there's just yeah, I can see how there's just something like addicting to that dy- dynamic because it's like when you just have like a dynamic where you where it's just like about how nasty the relationship is, where you just see those teeny tiny sparkles of hope, right? Like that can just be something you latch onto so hard that like it just takes teeny, just takes like small stuff like that to keep like just your your your, your faith in it going. Like I I, I think like yeah, Sasha is like, an example of that, and, like. I don't know. I, th- I think it was something that was brewing, but just like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, it wasn't like the full, I don't know, it's just so funny. Like, I knew it was there, but I feel like it didn't, it wasn't as a full force ship in, until, you know, we, we, until we got to season three, but we'll go into that later. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I guess that that's pretty much all I want to cover for Sasha. Actually, wait, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um no there was like um so the flashback in reunion that was drawn by uh cheyenne curtis Ooh. and uh you know storyboards well, are it. storyboards tend to be like they tend to be a lot more like open to interpretation just because like it's just an artist like sketching and whatever but like i think people kind of pointed out it's like uh, during the dance dance like the storyboards of the dance dance revolution scene there was like a like 
honestly, was it? A, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it was. Was it like blushing from Anne? I think there was just like. I think they were just. It was just I think it was like the intimacy. I think it was just the intimacy of the hand moment. holding. It was, I intimacy think there was like is a blush. strong word. Intimacy. The the the. What were you said? Because I I have like no words. I have no plan to describe it. And holding just was that? Nah. My goodness. No, we, we holding gotta, hands. We gotta go for something. We gotta, we gotta go for something more dramatic. We're talking about shipping here. <laughs> we can't go light here. It's shipping. Oh, no, yeah, post the, the, the boards what here. Yeah, 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 hand yeah, holding. Yeah, yeah, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck helped me find them. And keep in mind, in the final version, it doesn't have them holding hands. Yeah, that doesn't have that. Like. It's like, it's like is... there's a conscious like effort just like just like nah don't don't yeah, get that. <laughs> yeah like he's like nah no this no thank you <laughs> <He's> like... <laughs> Matt denied that one <laughs> but I think yeah I think that's that's all we want to talk like I know earlier before the recording we mentioned oh we want to bring this up but yeah that was pretty much it for to. Sasha and. And, uh, I mean, there's oh, there's shit. more in season one for Sasha and actually, in you no know, one of the things that people pointed to for for oh. like, our past, it was the the heart carriage. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Being, oh, like, yeah. Sasha being a cringe middle schooler, yeah, yeah, or yeah, Sasha yeah. being a cringe middle schooler who's got a cringe crush. On you know what? Yeah, so yeah actually, yeah, 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 like, yeah. No, we, actually, no, we do have to bring that up. I feel like, yeah, no, thank you so much for mentioning that because, yeah, God, I mean, I I won't lie, I do, I do. Honestly, I, I can't say that's an unfair analysis of the show, saying that, like, this is just Sasha, like, not knowing how to handle these unrequited feelings or, and that she's not even, like, fully aware of. Like, I can't say that's a bad analysis of it. Like, it is a pretty it's interesting not. read of, like, what's going on. Like, just, just because I don't know, I guess just how passionate Sasha is in that episode to maintain control, like, I, I, I can't disagree. Like, it's not my read, but, like, I can't disagree with it, if I'm being honest. Also, do we know who boarded that part? Uh, I, like, who? Them, but just who did? Who? It's all, I think you said Cheyenne Kurt. That was the flashback, I, so I, don't, I don't know who else was on. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I mean, they, they gave Anna, like, a hair clip. Like, it keeps distracting me every time I say it. Like, they actually gave her a hair clip, so it's like, she looks like Marcy, so it's like, what's going on with that? <laughs> what's, what's going on with that? <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's always interesting to see how board artists' styles kind of change or contrast with the final products. Yeah, I will say that like, I am no, in the agreement that like that Sasha, the the interpretation of Sasha having like a crush on Anne, like that kind of influences her actions, is like not an invalid like take on the show at all. Yeah, there's a like. I think by like season one, you have like some evidence for it, but like I think once we get to season three, we'll, we'll nah. There's like there's legit evidence. Like you could like you don't have to be like a super detective to figure it out. Like you can you got things to work with, you know. So I think it's yeah. a valid interpretation. Yeah, thank thank you guys, and we're approaching the the. Uh the one hour mark. So I, I think I'm going to go into season two now. Um, I, I guess, Nick, do you want to just cover, before we get into, uh, you know, the big one, the season two, <laughs> we'll, oh, yeah, we'll just yeah, go over yeah. the moments in Sprivey, like with Sprivey. I think it was uh, Return to Wartwood. Mm -hmm. It was mostly mm -hmm. like the uh, Sprig wanting to you know, Sprig forgot to get the red, I think, sun shell for Ivy. And, uh, you know, that led to everything that happened in covering... That, that that convinced him to lie to the town and Ivy about the gifts. And... I, I think this was the point, the part I was remembering, where, like, the town was, like, super invested in Sprivey now. Yeah, yeah. I think that's actually, that's actually, yeah. So there's that, and then also, well, do we had Ivy on? Yeah, Ivy on the sorry, Ivy on the run. Ivy, I, I forgot, about, I almost forgot about Ivy on the run. But yeah, do you want me to just like talk about um Return to Warwood or just uh two of them? I, I think I already covered Return to Warwood, unless and we want to oh, add okay, on to hey. that. Yeah. 
think it's just those two, right? Oh. Yeah, do you want yeah, you can talk about Ivy on the run then. Um although I'd be sure the same. I mean I I guess Spring has like that one cringy moment where he's like um, I guess, yeah, I guess Spring he has that one cringy moment. Um you know when he's talking to himself. Um he's trying to pump himself up for Ivy, right? Like he has that and like I'm trying to remember. I don't think there's see it's funny because like it's 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 the conflict comes from the fact that she can't spend any time with her boyfriend, but it's like or sorry, just having, having freedom, but like um I don't know. There, there's not that many, there's not that many strand moments. Like I was like, oh wait, there, no, no, that's what I meant. There's not that many, there's not that many striving moments. <laughs> you can edit that <laughs> out. <laughs> you can edit that. <laughs> My bad. Oh, my bad. There are you in the future. My bad. <laughs> um, that's a good. That's a good future podcast blooper right there. That, that's fine. Uh, I'll let it's like, like yeah, basically yeah. The Ivy on the run. It's like Sprig pumps himself up, and that kind of causes the conflict where like Ivy feels like she didn't see the world the same way Sprig did. I think that's all for Sprivy. Yeah, uh, literally, I, I think that's it. Okay. We'll all tap down season two. And then Toadcatcher, um I don't think there's any like major shipping stuff. It was mostly like a Sasha focused episode. I think it's, it's more like very much up and in, in, up for interpretation. Like is is Sasha's obsession purely platonic or is this because yeah, you had a crush and doesn't realize it or whatever. Yeah, to be honest, like it's like I don't know how to discuss that in this context. I think, yeah, I think we gave most for. Yeah, that's fair. No, I, I guess, yeah, I guess you can say, yeah, I guess you can say we already went over it for like reunion. Just, this is like, dang, I'm just trying to like, what are new ways we can talk about it? It's like, <laughs> like I'm trying to. I think. Honestly, of all of the things, uh, Toad, the, the biggest thing that Toadcatcher does for like Chipping and Sasha is showing a less domineering, less like exclusively antagonist side of Sasha to work with yeah. more than anything else, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, and you know, if this I, wasn't, I a... if this wasn't Marcy season, it would have made a difference. <laughs> Boy, I also, I guess you could also make the joke, you know how like, you know how people like get super jacked or they break up with their ex? Like, you know, make that joke with Zaja. She really like jumps into a bunch of workouts and training, right? Because she's like, it was every dealing summer, with her feelings. Right? Like, like, there is, there, I mean, it, it, it works, I guess. Like, it works. I feel like with season three is where you actually like design. Oh you yeah! Holy see. crap! Yeah. <laughs> you see the replications yeah. of that? Oh yeah! <laughs> finally, yeah, the gains finally come in after all that training. Yeah, it's like Sasha went to Sasha got gains after getting rejected. <laughs> yeah, getting rejected twice. Yeah, 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 yeah getting rejected twice. Like, oh my god! Break. Yeah. They made her arms the width of two spaghetti sticks instead of one spaghetti stick. <laughs> 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 yeah, and uh Yeah, I Marseille? think like, yeah, that's all we can talk about for uh <laughs> Yeah. All the other ships. Now we can talk about uh Marsan. Yeah, I I'm gonna try not talking about because I'm sure you guys have I'm sure you guys want to talk about it. But basically the inclusion, the inclusion of Marcy, and how she wasn't an antagonist, and because of how popular she was with the fandom and new fans, it's like, yeah, this was uh, this was Marsan season. Yeah, like yeah, this was just <laughs> monumental. I mean, I'll just try to keep it brief, you know, because I feel like I've been talking all the time. But like, I, I mean, I'll just say because I, I've mentioned this before in other episodes before, when it comes to the comparing Marcy and Sasha, but she was just like, like she was the Anti Sasha. I feel like that also just really helped propel this because instead of just having like this toxic dynamic of Anne, you had something that just felt like it was flourishing, right? Like you could just pull, 
you can just imagine these two in any juicy romantic scenario that's just perfect for shipping well if well if soft i mean like i'm sure there's some soft and stuff but like i, I swear like so much of what I, I, all I saw was just like diving deep into the angst of the relationship. All, all of Marcy, it was always like, oh, oh look how shy Marcy is when she's trying to confess to Anne or something. Like, he blushes oh, and looks down like one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And that's kind of because Marcy is a completely different like character type of characterization. Her ships like, are more related to being protective or like being caring and be that's like the focus of it per, per se like you see a lot of that kind of vibe of shipping as opposed to at least for now a lot of the more angst ridden oh like star-crossed lovers kind of not like star-crossed lovers per se but the this isn't going to end well and we know that kind of shipping or, yeah. and people having angst and all of that juicy drama rather than juicy kinds of but I think plot moments. I think the, like I, I the honeymoon like... the honeymoon period for Marsand was like for the fandom, I think was for the majority of season two until like the very end. Yeah, literally yeah, yeah. literally until the very end. Like yeah, it's the way insane. You... But I think impact what you like, wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I wanted to say like because keep in mind I'm not in the fandom during this time, so like I'm only seeing all the shipping stuff after the fact. You know what I mean? And to be honest, like not to put down Marsan now, I think it I think it is a really cute ship in season two. I I kind of felt like Marsan to me like got wasn't one dimensional like in terms of how the fandom talked about it but i think it got way more interesting after season two um in the sense of like because i felt like sasha and ann always have when people talk about them being together there's always angst there's always drama with marcian it starts off as like soft and not really they're you don't exactly know what it's marcy's super toxic thing yet you know what i mean it's only really till 2B till you got, start getting more into the bad stuff with Marcy's character. But, like, I don't know. I felt like Marsan was more, to me, I always think of the ship as more interesting after True Colors and kind of what the, not the, the journal hints, but, like, the idea of forgiveness from Anne, you know? Like, yeah. I, don't know. I, I felt like Marsan actually has more meat on its bones after true color after the show's done than it actually has during the during season two which is like by the fandom like by how much it produced art or or fanfics or whatever you wouldn't know that but like that's that's just my opinion of it no, like yeah mm. oh, I, think I, I think someone's about to say something yeah go ahead go ahead yeah it general it almost seems feels like like the start of Markan was a bit more of a the fandom really really likes Marcy so we're going to ship her with the main character where by the end the concepts and the themes that both characters have had especially with Marcy's true colors moment and like kind of even further on what ha what happens through all of season three informs yeah. a more it informs a more unique relationship rather than a ship where the ship is the identity. Like the existence of the ship is kind of in part the point, whereas later on it develops far more of its its own identity compared to everything else in the world. I say. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think like with I don't know, I I, I I'm just gonna repeat myself, so yeah, I, I agree. I I've got a, a a little mini a little bit of a mini tangent on kind of like how shipping I've seen pops up, and I think the reason why Marsan was so popular even both before and after are due to like two main reasons. The first is that during this time, even pre two even pre True Colors, the fandom was growing as season two B aired, and as during the season one A hiatus, even that's when I joined. And 
there was like a huge swarm of people coming in and loving Marcy and seeing Marcy as very relatable. And especially with fans that are like Marcy's age, people are always going to want to ship the relatable character with other people because they want good things for the relatable character. And plus, three true colors, at least, three like a whole bunch of stuff going down. Marsan was kind of the like, no baggage ship. Like, they had, like, one little yeah. pickup, and then stuff got foreshadowed, of course, but they were just kind of, like, there was no real reason for them to end up, like, having something go wrong without looking at the subtext and, like, seeing how things might play out later. <laughs> yeah, I feel, oh, yeah, I know. Plus, I mean, plus, I, I still remember there was just that one meme. That, I don't know. It's just... Ah, I don't know. because There's just... I feel like the fan content around that time just captured the vibe of the trio so a lot of the time because it was like, so, I mean, they're, like, like, that, like that one meme where it's just, you know, you know that one SpongeBob meme where um, Squidward's just staring, watching Patrick and SpongeBob run. Like, I don't know, there's someone edited it to like <laughs> to have it Sasha watching them run. Then there's also just like <laughs> that one meme where it compares like Marcy and Sasha, where it's like, um, why do you like them? And it's like, Sasha's this, like gigantic essay, and then Marcy's like she's nice, <laughs> like that's it. And it's like <laughs> I don't know, like I think yeah, with Marcy, it was just yeah, just that ability to just imagine two people who like each other in a romantic way, no baggage. And I think that, that was just why Marcy and took off so hard in season two because it's like because they they were there waiting for that chance to do it, but. Because of season one, because season one only introduced like one freaking human, and that had to be just the like the and that one freaking human just had to be extremely toxic. It's like they were all waiting, they were all waiting, and as soon as they got that chance, that's when they leap for it. Yeah, I think like for, for me, like I feel like the show is trying to portray as like it's almost like not well, kind of it's kind of tricking you in the sense of like. Oh, like Anne and Marcy have this great, awesome friendship, and Sasha like completely ruins it. And then you get beginning of the end, and it's like, oh, okay, this is a little bit more three dimensional than that. And like, not to like, I don't want to be like mean to Marcy here, but I feel like Marsan did have like some toxicity. It's just the show is focusing on it. Like, one thing I, I think it might be easy to forget, but, like, it's implied that, like, Sasha and Marcy both, like, um, pressure Anne to stealing the box. Like, it's not like just Sasha did it. You know what I mean? And, like, yeah. the whole time, like, Sasha, probably throughout the entirety of their friendship, is consistently pushing Anne to do things that she doesn't want to do. And Marcy's just kind of like, eh, hey, whatever, let's just do it anyway. It just kind of lets and get pushed around a bit you know what i mean it's never explored in the show like marcy standing up for Anne because she's not marcy's character you know what i mean but like i don't know i feel like there is some toxicity in Marcy, and even we get more like bad stuff with marcy in 2b in season three um it's just like the show is trying to like make your focus not on that you know what i mean like focus on sasha being toxic Anne and Marcy, they're fine. Like, don't think about it until everything gets fucked over. Color. Mm. Yeah. I know that Matt specifically said a huge part of Marcy at the Gates was trying to make Marcy as likable as possible before, like, slowly pulling that away over the course of the next season. Because I didn't want her to end up being, like, blamed for true, for true colors in a huge way and, like, become the, like, scapegoat of the fandom that wasn't any that that couldn't be forgiven later when she got redeemed yeah yeah because I, I know like it, i think it's clear that matt and the crew are trying to see obviously a three-dimensional character but also a sympathetic character too like when marcy betrays the group you're not like i don't i've never seen a reaction where someone went oh my god like they completely hated marcy after that point i've never seen that i've seen that on some like comments and some other places but never like in a reaction channel or like any reasonable so <laughs> yeah, any reason. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> i love the qualifier of any reasonable place but... yeah. yeah also yeah it's... like agreed so it's like 
Yeah, yeah, that's it. They just want her to be a more sympathetic character. So then when Anne does forgive her, you're not like, eh, she doesn't deserve it. You're like, eh, hold on. There was some nuance there. Like, So, yeah. Yeah, you, you look at it and you go, yeah, I kind of see why Marcy was in this position. It's a bad position to be in. But, like, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are we... Are, can we, I guess we can... Can we also just talk about, like, it's death? <laughs> Since, like, it, it's not... <laughs> this is it. Like, right? It's not going to be in season, season three discussion, so it's like... <laughs> I just realized, I, I just realized, like, I don't know, I just still, I just, I don't know, I think this is, I think Amphibia just has some of the best examples of just what happens to ship discussion and content just based on how the show progresses. Because I feel like Amphibia is just so good at, like, just making you care about these characters and their dynamics. So when, like, it just... One of them, one of one of them, pretty much just dies or just gets to its lowest wait, point. Wait, Nick, sorry. Be- a f- before we get to that, can I just talk about uh, a day at the aquarium? Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I I know. I'll, I'll get back to you because I know what you're about to talk about for <laughs> that point about like how the ship of changes when the show changes. It's like, um, just remember like how like Mar- how desperate Marcy was to like keep trying and hold on to Anne. In yeah. in a, a day at the aquarium, and then when Anne leaves, I think that's when some of the shipping stuff like changed. Like it was still like happy, <laughs> oh, like it was still like happy and yeah. wholesome. But like, dude, there was like yeah. that, like there was that oh, little like yeah, pinch yeah. of like longing. Yeah, there's yes, I I yeah, I remember. Yeah, I and, knew. And I know Chuck, I, I have I, I have read those one. portions. I have read those yeah. portions of the journal where where we get to see how marcy is like, oh. f- is feeling in that moment yeah i i rem- oh my god i rem- i just oh. Rem- yeah oh my god i i i just remember seeing some art oh, damn it never make me nostalgic but like no yeah you're 100 percent right like it's insane like it would still be like oh yeah they love each other but mm, there's so- something something splitting them apart <laughs> like, oh man i'm sorry it was just so, so what- funny one last thing that I haven't heard mentioned is we kind of in in season one A and earlier season two B we kind of see Marsan at its like best I guess we don't we don't really see like we see it in flashbacks I feel like a lot of people forget that Marcy's toxic traits were I mean this clearly wasn't as bad as like Sasha's purposeful manipulation but her like lack of paying attention and kind of Having Anne do a lot for her wasn't the healthiest aspect to a friendship. And, like, yeah. I think pre True Colors, we kind of all thought and assumed that that was her, like, bigger toxic trait, if, if anything was going to be, be between. Because we knew that Matt had said Sprig was her first good, like, healthy, truly healthy friendship. And we, we had to fill in the blank for that somehow, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I think I think just yeah, I, I think Marcy's was just cleverly. I don't want to say it was cleverly hidden. I think it was just if if there was any like if Anne needed to be forcefully co- coerced into like doing something the group wanted. I mean, it was just Sasha doing it. So I feel like Marcy, even so, she would have like there would be issues of Mar like just clear issues of Marcy would just be easier to ignore because like you know the loud person there. It's just Sasha, right? And, like, I mean, yeah, you just, like, God, I don't know. It, it's just, I think it's just still amazing just how they hid all those small things while leading up the true colors. Because, yeah, I mean, if you just look back at all those small moments, like, and they dare the aquarium were, like, you know what I mean? She basically just, like, t- not, not talks down to Anne, but just, yeah, you, you know what I mean? You just have those small moments where, like, she, she brings up um, Anne staying in, in, um, in Utopia, the worst moment. And then you have in the first temple where, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys won't get that. It's, I don't know. It's, it's all those small moments that feel easy to ignore because it's just so much, it's just much more subtle than, because Sasha's just loud about it. Like Sasha's just loud about getting her way. Marcy, it's like, like, God, I don't know. It, it, it's some Marcy part of it. I feel like, like it's like, go ahead. Mar- Marcy isn't like communicating like her own, like, wants per se she's trying to hint at it with Anne, 
but Anne isn't like getting it. Like she Marcy's trying to keep like okay, essentially the, the, the whole trio is just like an example of terrible. But like like Marcy isn't isn't really like telling Anne like why she actually wants her there. She's trying to make up all this logical bullshit, like like, oh, she's gonna need help to pack up or whatever, or some logical like it's not for any of that. She just wants to keep Anne around. And like yeah. Marcy just isn't being direct with it. Sasha will just like yell at Anne to do it and then so- and Anne will be like, okay, I guess, and then just do it. So like, yeah. Because I think no, I, I, I feel like Thumb probably wants us to move on, so I'll, I'll just make this clip. But like, I, I think, yeah, it, it's like, shoot, I'm, now I'm forgetting what I was going to say. But <sighs> I just forgot. I don't know. I, don't a point. No, I just I forgot it. it. No, I just forgot it. Damn, I literally had it in my head. Uh, Sticks, what are your, like, I, I don't think we've covered the. Uh... The true color stuff in depth yet but i think prior to that point uh sticks if, if you're available to speak like wh- what were your thoughts on marsan pre-true colors uh six we can't hear you if you're if you're speaking okay i guess while he figures that out um i guess is there anything we can talk about for so yeah, we covered. I, I guess I can I can talk about New Wartwood. Oh, let's go! <laughs> let's oh go. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> basically, for New Wartwood, what happened was that like, uh, like Marcy was talking and blushed, and that's when uh. That's when like the Marcy the Marsan stuff really ramped up. And uh like funny story, like I think someone on the subreddit I think created a couple of alt accounts where he just where they just complained about they said something about Marsan and then they created an alt to like shit on Marsan. And then, what? and then, then created like made like memes talking about how like, oh like we don't get to talk about ships, and then it kind of snowballed with the. Uh, it kind of snowballed into like other people thinking that like, people didn't ship Marsan, and like people like didn't like shipping, and then it's like, and it was such this weird like non-issue where like a majority of the posts on the subreddit were just people being like oh like just let people enjoy ships even though there was like hardly any like like push like any complaining about the shipping like about marsan shipping and then like this person just went on to like another subreddit and bragged about like starting like a false flag in the amphibia fandom. Called a social experiment, I believe. Yeah, as a social yeah, experiment. Yeah, like a social it. experiment. It was like, and it was such a weird, like, 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 I don't think it did any, like, long-term damage to, like, perception yeah. of the fandom or the subreddit. It was just so weird, like. Yeah. It was, it was just, like, a really weird yeah, it was basically everyone. It was months. basically yeah. everyone complaining well, about that. agreeing. It's like, it's like oh, let people like it's like no one. <laughs> it was all just because of that one weird, that one weirdo who just wanted to quote unquote experiment on the fandom. Like they just instigated a whole. I don't even know what to call it, a shipping war. I don't think it was even. What it wasn't really even was. a shipping war. It was just a shipping war. It's like they were just talking just about like how a, like toxic the fandom was. For being against Marsan, but no one was really against Marsan. But then everyone yeah, thought yeah. people were against Marsan. So like the whole suburb was like, oh, we're like we support Marsan or whatever. It's like, but like huh. there was no opposition. There was like, <laughs> and, like, but then, 
And then I don't know why it got so, like, bad that I somehow, like, ended up becoming a moderator, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. So it's like, okay, like, <laughs> it was, That's it was weird. weird. Yeah, like, it was, like, the Amphibio fandom is not, like, okay, yeah, sure, I have, like, Okay, this is kind of off topic, but like, yeah, sure, I have like, sure, I wish like, there was less focus on the trio, more on the frogs and planners, what, whatever. But I wouldn't call like the fandom like, like, toxic or like, yeah. Yeah, like it was. I, it was such I a almost weird... call this fandom the opposite of toxic. In terms of, especially in terms of shipping, yeah, like that's the... almost eighty three thing. Like, yeah, like yeah, that. like yeah, that's the thing. Like yeah, just the frog show. It, it just the amphibian fan. It just, we, I don't think we ever had like, any legitimate shipping drama. Like I don't, I don't no, we think didn't. we didn't. Did. No, <laughs> yeah, we, we never did. did. Never, the thing we had never. was shippers versus non shippers, and but, <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, pre that whole weird thing that happened with Marsan, it was. I would say it was pretty hostile towards shipping in most environments. I would say, like, maybe hostile isn't even the right word. It was more that it was just taboo to talk about it because people were so yeah. tired of it from Star Versus and so much yeah, of the fandom was ex Star Versus. Yeah, kind of that oh, yeah. Like, dude, it, was just, it was just funny. Like, yeah, that's, that's one of the funniest ships I saw. I guess we can go down to season three, but like, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was just funny because, like, yeah, again, like, so many people just, I guess so many people just had that, I don't know, that, that quote unquote. Star versus trauma, and like they're just. And I don't even think it was like it wasn't even because like I feel like at that point, here's the thing. Here's I, th I think at that point, we just had tons of people. They they already they, I don't know. We had they've they've already been. It was really used to the whole nine yards of the thing. It's like they they they're not they're not saying like they, I don't think they were saying like oh I don't think they were against ships just for like just for thinking oh some sort of dumb. I think they're just like. Please, I just don't want the arguments that come with ships. You know what I mean? I just don't want yeah. like I just want like like the dumb reactions that come with ships. I think I feel like which, everyone which inadvertently like, caused yeah. arguing. Just, like, yeah, it was very. I think like, I feel like that there, was. Oh, go ahead, Sensory. I think for a bit there, there was a bit of this general vibe of if you're a ship big shipper, you'd go to be in the Owl House fandom, and if you weren't, you'd be in the Amphibia fandom, where these things weren't a concern. We didn't worry about them. At least like for a little bit there. Or you just you just go on the art side or something. Hmm. Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah, it, was well con yeah it was well contained there. Actually, yeah, there was like a lot of shipping on there. Yeah, it was well contained there. I, I feel like I mean, different... that was more like a I season like... one kind of And then season I feel two. like Sorry, with, with different part, like I feel like shipping is talked about a little differently depending on what platform you're on the show too. Like I feel like on Twitter and Reddit, it's almost talked like. At least what I notice, like, it feels very differently talked about shipping in the show in general. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I wouldn't say like the subreddit is against shipping, but it's like there are more debates of whether and of sh shippers and non-shippers. With Twitter, like, it it's not even like a conversation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like the shipping is just like a part of the show. Even though it's not, but like it's a part of the fandom. There we go. It's a part of the fandom, and it's just like chill with it. I can't really say for other places like the Discord. That definitely felt like the most like the difference in conversation. Like, definitely like there's a contrast between those two platforms specifically. Yeah. Yeah, I think because I I was I think more most uh, exposed to the subreddit community for Amphibia. It's like. It felt like a very like old guard, new guard kind of like kind of shake up where it's like so many new fans like were coming in compared to season one. It was just like it was just like a natural like change in the demographic. And I think at the same time it's like a lot of the shipping stuff was going on and I think for the first half of season two, um, the Owl House is wrapping up season one, and it's like the Owl House fandom and the Amphibia fandom are very uh, 
like a you know very intertwined in many ways it's like the shows <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't get mad. No, no, no I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> that's a, that's another that's another discussion for another day. That's a battle for another day. <laughs> <laughs> this is the show. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think. Yeah, Mars. Uh, yeah, season two was a very big like, <laughs> like change, which yeah. is okay. That's just the way things are. Yeah, and and then there's like Tumblr, which is I don't know what old Tumblr Amphibia is. I don't know if it even existed <laughs> pre like season one. Yeah, but I'd say that Tumblr is kind of a lot of long lore paragraphs and then a lot of shipping fanficy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's like fifty fifty. Uh sticks uh try let's like what are your thoughts on marsan uh hi right, can you hear me yes we can yes yes yeah yes. Okay, good good um if i remember correctly uh the question was uh what were my thoughts on marsan uh on season two specifically yeah like pre or yeah. true colors if mm. possible but we we kind of covered yeah, well, we kind of covered two, most of 2b okay True colors. Um, honestly, I think I may be the wrong person to ask because I didn't join the fandom until like right around when True Colors aired. But oh, you know, actually, so why yeah. why did you start off the, the this discussion then? But um, uh, how, how do I say this? Um, to not go in to not go on too big of a tangent. Uh, let's just say that I'm I was the kind of person that when I first joined. And when I first joined um, the Amphibia Discord, I back read through like the Amphibia chat, Amphibia chatter um, channel all the way back to when it first began. So let's just say I kind of holy shit! I, I didn't, ex yeah. I didn't experience right. most stuff firsthand, but I did like see, you know, what records were kept from back then, oh, and I have a good idea of guys. how things were. Um, yeah. And well for season two A, um well I like uh, it's kinda difficult to say mo more because I feel you've all kinda yeah, it's summarized okay. it well so, so with you, a... you can talk about you can talk about like the true color stuff and mm, how that relates stuff. to Mar how that relates to like Marsan, if you like. Mm. Uh well just to jump off like a pr prior point, um Marsan absolutely got big uh, off of being like you know the the ship with no baggage um, because from uh, around that time uh, it was right around the time that I joined the fandom you know like late May 2021 I was still it I wouldn't say it was the norm still I feel we were kind of in a transitional period then but I feel that it was still the norm that many people I wouldn't say most but many people were very loud um weren't particularly fans of like sasha in general and the idea of shipping her with like with either marcy or with Anne, simply because you know uh her relationship with Anne specifically was not the healthiest um and you know marcy was in, in, when she came into the scene she immediately exploded um in terms of popularity uh, th this may not be specifically related to Marcy, but I feel that for people who are interested in shipping, um, perhaps there's always, you know, that, that bit of with how much Marcy resonated with people as, as a character, as a person, they may feel that, oh, um, she's so much like me. Um, <laughs> I wish, uh... I don't know, I wish it could get together with these other characters because, you know, at the end of the day, shipping and, you know, uh, fiction are just exercises kind of like similar to just playing with action figures or dolls, but like on a fictional scale, it's kind of like just doing what you want um, and just, you know, just seeing what happens. Uh, True Colors absolutely changed the scape, but 
it's really funny to me that once True Colors happened and the general landscape with Marsan specifically or Marcan, um, people didn't really mind shipping Marcy with Anne or with Sasha after her secrets were revealed, despite how, you know, utterly, um, I guess the word would be problematic, uh, she, you know, her, some of her motives were. And it's like, you could say it's some favoritism. Uh, I mostly just prefer to see it more positively and just say, okay, so people realize that there is some merit in just cheap shipping characters, even though the relationships are not the healthiest, just because, you know, the dynamics that are present there are interesting. Because, honestly, I love angst. That's not a secret, but just the sheer level at which... Marcy's relationship with Sasha and Anne changed after the revelations of True Colors. Uh, just it just it just changed everything, including the way the ships were interpreted. And I find that I don't know. It's 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 kind of interesting, and I I enjoyed that period a lot. Thank you, Six. That was yeah, a, I mean, like, that was a really yeah good yeah like I was and yeah I, I think Nick, this is a, this is a good time for you to bring up. I know Six talked yeah, about just... how once the reveal happened, um, the fandom's interpretation of like Marsan kind of changed. I'll I'll let you elaborate. Uh, it, it, I mean, it it, it, it obliterated. Like it was just like gone, like <laughs> gone, reduced to ashes, like vaporized <laughs> in an instant. Like it was insane because it just it was night and day. Like I just witnessing that was just like I, mean, I think that's just like why why that episode just holds so much presence because like yeah it really felt like like marcy just had a stranglehold on like because amphibia was like yeah i think amphibia was slowly becoming like you know probably like one of the most popular cartoons airing at that time and yeah one of the things that people instantly knew about amphibia was marcy and she had such a stranglehold on it right and then boom who colors happens and like it just like i don't know like just every, I it was just gone. Like Marse was just gone. I think it was oh. there here and there, but it was just like I don't know. It just felt like it just wasn't. Like I, 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 I think there was angst stuff. I think there was angst stuff. Oh, like, oh angst yeah, there stuff was like was definitely there. I, I feel like yeah, whatever whatever shipping art like decreased was like substituted oh, by angst. by oh. angst. Whether it was like Marsan oh, and angst or oh. Sasha and ants. Oh, it was true. just and, or that's... or Sasha R C ants. Yeah. It was just ants an, <laughs> angst in general. An, an angst. Angst. <laughs> like yeah. yeah, it just thank God. But I think saying that yeah, it just... disappeared is, is too strong a word. Like it didn't it wasn't the primary ship of the fandom anymore, but calling it like gone is well, like, is not true. I'd say it just became like even with the rest of them. No, I think I think Actually, what, I think the point. status quo, like just I think True Colors did it was did what it was supposed to do. It changed the entire status quo for the show and it changed the entire status quo for the fandom. Like I, I think the, it, it changed everything. I think when when Nick says like it was gone, I think he like I think he's thinking about more of the like the happy tone of all the Marsan are dying, <laughs> like overnight. Yeah, just <laughs> angst. Yeah, just, 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 yeah, just, just the overall feel of it because it just felt like, like I know there was so Marsan fan on, but like I don't know. I guess just like the I don't know. You mean you mean like you know what I mean? Like there was just there's just like a, a feeling. I don't know. There's just like a difference of feeling I get from like the amount of Mar Marsan fan art you could find. Mar sorry, Marsan fan art you can find in season two versus just like. Say the beginning of season three, like there's just like I don't know. It just feels like if there's ever like a shipping discussion, it was it was about like oh hey Mars and Cannon, Mars and Cannon, Mars and Cannon. But then it was just like I don't know. That question just stopped being asked as much. Like that's just how it felt. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah. <laughs> And I think it was also about, the, I mean, I wouldn't say that anyone ever had huge hopes for any of these becoming canon, even with the, like, knowledge that it's technically a possibility now that we've seen a gay main character or a bisexual main character in the Owl House. But I don't think, I think, I think that, like, 
ninety percent of the shippers at any point in the show were like, "Yeah, we think that shipping these two of the the girls or these three of the girls is cool, but it's not gonna happen like canon wise." Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's what made the Amphibia fandom so chill. It's like I think most shippers were like they were just having fun with it. Yeah. And like yeah. I, I don't know, it, it just it just felt like this was more of like a I, I know we had a bunch of like, you know, like kids here, but I don't know. It just felt like this was like a bit of a veteran community in a way. Like like the we all the people here they've been through all the cartoon drama. They're just here to chill and watch their their cartoon about the funny frogs. <laughs> like I feel like every, I feel like there was like that sort of understanding um, behind everyone. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I feel like I feel like that's what caused I, Nick. I feel like that lack of understanding. <laughs> I just mean, to the duality I just of like here. some of the takes in the I just, fandom. But I think for, I just, in regards to I just shipping, mean, I just yeah. I feel like that was like the most like. I think that was like the least problematic part of Amphibious fandom. Yeah. Like the actual like shipping itself was like tame compared to like what other problems I have with it. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's another battle for another day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Maybe another war for another day. <laughs> Uh, oh god no please no <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can we, we kind of briefly touched on like Sasharsi but uh wow oh, I, I, I just wanted yeah. to mention the one thing right I just okay okay it was just I it just again it just relates back to like how this show affects um the sort of fan content but I don't know there was if anyone remembers there was like that one ghost Marcy AU and it was just Oh, oh yeah! yeah. That one like, if you were just shipping Marcy and Sasha the whole summer, that was so Marcy and funny. Farmer Sasha all oh, the way. My... I'm not even a shipper, but that went hard. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, like that was just so funny looking back. But I was like, it was, it was some, of the, I, some, of the, some of the art was pretty nice, though. I'll admit that some of the art was pretty nice. I, I like I like how creative this fan could be. <laughs> like, I, I, I to, like it. take that take that concept and like separately make their own show about that. Ooh, yes, please. I mean, I'll I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Uh, and yeah. to be honest, there wasn't a lot of like Sasha RC stuff. I I know, like after Two Colors, Matt did the sit down and think interview, but like, I feel like that when Matt talked about how much like synergy Sasha and Marcy had in comparison to Anne. Like, people had, like, I feel like Nick and I had a different takeaway compared to, like, the rest of the fandom, <laughs> where it's, like, we were, like, yo, like, I actually, no, I was kind of, like, I, 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 I was just thinking about how, oh, wow, it's so interesting how, like, Matt, like, cl- like, clearly has, like, something in his head about, like, the dynamic between Sasha and Marcy, and then Nick was like, and then Nick was DMing me. He was like, you know, if Matt went into it depth this much here in the interview, do you think it's gonna be in the show? I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> 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 That's so sad. but I think that, yeah, like. I think that was the only moment in the fandom where there was like there was like enough time, or like I guess the, I guess the status quo of the show made it easy to make like Sasha RC content with like, yeah, you know like, yeah, Sasha's Anne's fate unknown. There. Yeah, Anne's not there. Yeah, Marcy's status is like in limbo. So it's like a lot of people were like. And okay, also for the true colors leak, it's like we had a month of so much uncertainty until we found out like until we got the official release with like Marcy in the in the tube, the healing chamber, and like there's all this like, you know, like Sasha rescues Marcy and it's like there's something there. 
And yeah, ghost the ghost AU and I I can't really think of anything know. else to talk about for Sasha RC. I feel yeah, like it, it was just, to be honest, oh, I, like the I feel like Sasha RC gets a lot in the not a ton, but that ending, like I'm allowed to talk about the journal, right? Or like Yeah, you can talk about the no. journal, like Okay, so like I feel like the journal definitely adds a lot more Sash RC because Matt talked about I even think in our interview, Matt talked about how the time stamp kind of allowed Sasha and and Marcy to have a chance to kind of reconnect with each other after they don't have such a strong relationship during, like, the series, you know? And then, like, the journal just has Sasha ask, like, hey, you want to move in with me? And then Marcy just, so it's like, I don't know. What the why? Yeah, Why? yeah. Oh, that, that does happen. The, that yeah, it does. It happens. Context, this, what the oh, this was happened. this was at the end of the journal. What? Yes. Yeah. Did you not? Wait. Like, yes. Yeah. Sasha, I, uh-huh. I, uh-huh. I got to Listen. Listen, I think... with Sasha, yo, oh, like... actually, okay, okay. I, I, I forgot. I forgot. Wait, impact. We we had a separate section. Like, uh, we can talk more about the journal stuff. Like you can you can oh, okay. you, you can inf- you can inform us more about the journal stuff in the end. But yeah, no, yeah, I, I remember way. I remember reading that part. That was uh... a right. dude. Matt's a such RC shipper. Like I don't care about <laughs> Matt is a such <laughs> RC. Well, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm betting on it. Yeah, yeah he, it's, it's clear. Yes, he is. It's clear. I, I now we know. Now we know what he stands. Too much evidence. Now we know what he stands. It's it's clear. I mean, I I just the only reason I'm hoping Matt is a such RC shipper is just so like. Just so they can leave Anne alone. <laughs> I, mean, I, got, I, got, I got to take up Sasha RC, bro. Excuse me. It. It's like we are, kinda, it's like we are not right. the same. It's like you ship Sasha, like Sasha and Marcy because of their characters. I ship <laughs> Sasha RC because I want Anne to not be with them. Okay. Okay. I kind of agree with you, some, but like for a slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't even believe it. I, I can't that, even believe that. That's just so. Ra- how do you? That's just, that's crazy to me. I I can't even believe it. Well, okay, go ahead. Nick, go ahead, you've go. heard this. I've told you this before. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, like the roommate thing. Oh, the I'm roommate thing. Yeah, roommate. that was that is crazy. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, wow. <laughs> that's, that's very romantic. I know the whole oh my god, there are roommates thing is a thing, but I wouldn't call that any sort of canonization. I'd call that more like opening doors. I mean, yeah, I mean, door, yeah, come like, on. it's, you know, it's, 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 it's so, it's so romantic yeah. finding like a reliable roommate in California to pay rent with. <laughs> Look, at least they get to interact. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, uh I, I guess, does anyone right, have nah. anything else to talk about, uh, Marsan? Because I, we're not going to talk about it for a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure we will in the journal. We will, we will talk about when we get to the journal stuff, but. Uh... Do you have more to say about, like, post-TC Marsan, or are we waiting for, like, season three, going over season three as a whole? Go- going that? over season three. Okay. Oh, like, Dar- just call it Darsan. Like, add the Darsan oh section. <laughs> what? Uh, no, this is a very thing. different thing. <laughs> Thank no, no, you no, 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 no. <laughs> The rock eyebrow. Yeah, I think. Uh... Okay, I think we can talk about season three shipping now. Um, wait, let me see if I have any other notes here. Did I miss anything? Okay, yeah, we can go season three. Let's let's start with something light. Um. I guess we can talk about the Boon Choice, Mr. and Mrs. Boon Choi. I mean, it's not a what? ship. It's, <gasps> it's like it's already like a canon. Yeah. It's so like I don't want to call it a ship, but yeah. It's just not like a pairing like, that is already yeah. a thing and very wholesome yeah. and yeah. It's just it's just awesome thing. I yeah. think I think it was like peak. Mr. X was like peak, like. Boon Choi, like appreciation, 
like you know, like Mrs. Uh, Boonchoy is like driving through, like driving through the streets, and Mr. Boonchoy is just like just lovingly staring at her. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, so and even when right. he like break, like he breaks an egg, and like she's looking at him, like oh you, like it's like it's so it's so sweet. <laughs> Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. And like. Um. Yeah. When. 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 When she's driving through traffic and like. Um. What up? So was it? No. Yeah. Mr. It was Escape. I think it was. I would. Wait. Was it? No. It. It was. Oh, I yeah. think it was like. Uh. I think it was Escape from. Yeah. Escape to Amphibia. And like you know, what I mean, Mr. Bone Tree. He just looks like he's in love while she's driving, and you know what I mean. Just, like, yeah. That's yeah. It's um. I, yeah. I mean, like almost. I. I. I feel like people. I feel like because I mean, Amphibia is. Like, no, Amphibia was. I mean, because yeah, Matt calls Amphibia like an anime sitcom, and like again, man, I feel like just part because come on, how many sitcoms are there where where like the joke, <laughs> the joke of the dad is like you're it's it's basically like the fifties humor where it's like I hate my wife, like that's all the jokes, <laughs> that's all the jokes with them, and then like it's just like how then it's also just how dysfunctional. The relationship it is between like the husband and, and and wife, but yet somehow they're still together. But like, yeah, with the Boone Choice, it was just nah, man. This is just a married couple that love each other, and we're gonna give you a ton of cute moments. There's gonna be no drama, no drama. I mean, I guess except with Anne, but like, seriously, yeah. not just well, straight, I will man, say just that forward. whole like, I don't know how to describe the trope, but you know what I'm talking about. Cartoon dad who's like. Sort of loving, but also like a failure to put it <laughs> heavily. Yeah, he's oh, not a yeah, failure. No, he's like, you know damn. what I mean? Oh, yeah, no, like, like, like the, yeah, no, I mean, like, like the, it, it's like the loving. What, what can we call them? Like the loving whip dad, or like the? I mean, because you know, I mean, like they get bullied. I mean, I don't even talk about like the kind of like dad that gets like they're 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 an awesome dad, but the show also likes to bully them for some reason, or like I don't know, or something like that. Like, like they're not like the like the stereotypic like they're not like your idea of like of like a macho man dad like they're just like you know what I mean they're more they wear their heart on their sleeve more and like I don't know it's just ironic because like this because everyone's like man we want more dads like that but they're like I don't know it's just I I, I gotta give myself a crap too I don't know there's just something that's so amusing about watching them get abused <laughs> like there's something so amusing I don't know why. Like, because Mr. Boonchoy is just like humiliated in every episode, and yet it makes me laugh every time. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think we covered everything about the Boonchoys. Unless, does anyone else want to add? Oh, no. well, I mean, wait, can we talk about their origin or something? Like, like Mrs. Boonjoy dragged him to America. Like, he did, I'm pretty sure, like, Matt said that like, he didn't want to move. Oh, yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, that's all I got. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> I think that's yeah. all I got. Like, like, yeah. I'm like, that's I all I like, got. I feel like I had more to say, but like, I don't know. It's just my brain's not working. The Boonjoys are awesome. That's all, that's, that's all I got left. Yeah, they're they're fun. I do like the little information that I think, like Miss Boon Choi convinced Mister Boon Choi to to move with her to yeah. America. Like that's like a cute backstory. Yeah. Okay, I think we can. I think we can talk about Sprivey again. <laughs> <laughs> Sprivey Part Three. Yeah, Sprivey Part Three. Basically, you know, I guess uh, Sticks. Do you want to talk about Sprivey in season three? You're cute. All right. <laughs> That's <laughs> more... <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sticks. So yeah, basically. Aww. So basically, That's kind of where my. That's kind of where my thoughts end. <laughs> Um, <laughs> That's okay, right. but in season, but in season three, but in season three specifically, um, oh yeah, <laughs> seriously, I'm sorry. No, no, it's I'm all right. I, on I, 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 I'll take it from you. <laughs> Thank you, Sticks. Okay. <laughs> um, basically, it's like Spryby is like canon, and everyone's tired of it. Like all the characters are tired <laughs> of it, and. uh I, I think the fandom, like, the fandom, like, there are people in the fandom that were kind of tired of it, too. And they're like, and I think they what missed the point. 
of the episode <laughs> commenting on how tired they are of it. But yeah, it's crazy that like, like that don't Scribe tell me, don't tell me you want God, something like, deep from Amphibia and then completely miss the point when they when it's there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, nah, nah, nah. You you got a you got a right to rant. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, it's weird because like coming into Spryby as an episode, like I was ready to be like, eh, this episode. But then I really enjoy it, and then like the fandom out of nowhere. Is shitting on it for some reason. I didn't get it. That episode was hilarious. But anyways, you know, like yeah, that episode was just like <laughs> literally. I, I I love that fucking episode so much. Like it's just I don't know on all fronts. Like honestly, okay, we we can go through about Spryby. I I'll get to that. But like, dude, on all fronts, Jesus Christ! Like that episode was a million times better than it had any right to be. I mean, like for one, it's yeah. hilarious. Honestly, for two, it's hilarious. For three, it's hilarious. Four, it's hilarious. For five, it's hilarious. It's a funny fucking episode. Then you have Fern. Goes from a background character <laughs> to a fan favorite in one episode. I did not how know that Fern existed. Like, that is not, like, you can't even, how is that, how is that legal? How can you even legally do that? That's insane <laughs> they managed to do that. Like, a literal background character, and we all came to love her in just one episode. Stumpy. My, he's amazing here, too. Like, literally, he's not, he made, oh, the like, made the some comeback. Some people made comeback. Sasha, now we're getting the Sasha payoff. So you just get the studio to do a fucking cheerleader dance, and somehow it's like, oh my god, I love this. This is like the development we've all been waiting for. Like somehow it's just like, Spryvy was just like, I don't know. I feel like it satisfied both fronts, man. I mean, like I'm gonna be honest, like it was satisfying for the people who were here for the frogs and the girls, <laughs> but like, I don't know. Like I, I love the episode. The biggest win that Spryvy made was not actually making it a shipping episode. Like, it was an episode with the ship where that was part of it, but it wasn't a shipping episode at all, and it was very cognizant of the fact that you weren't necessarily here for them. I think it's pretty funny that Spryby is, like, Sasha lecturing uh, Sprig and Ivy on that they can't do everything with each other as if she didn't just spend the last half season moaning about how she wanted to be with Anne again and like I'm gonna be a better person for you <laughs> fair, fair, fair. <laughs> but yes I think everybody like the entire town being completely fed up with Sprivy is one of the best things that, that happened in that <laughs> episode the, the town has a whole arc about Sprivy Fuck. No, I, God, I don't know. I just love that. <laughs> like, it's like they go from like not even knowing what the fuck is going on between them. Then suddenly they're like, "Ooh, they're the town favorite." Then, then they're now they they're, hate they're, them. They're, they're just like, like, I don't know why. Like, I know people say like the the, the pinata scene with Andrews is like the funniest thing, but I don't know. I always. I instantly start laughing as soon as they walk in and they're like, "Hey guys, can someone give us a? Can someone give like the the couple a seat?" And everyone's just like. Oh, like the like the whole town is just like oh these two really like it gets me every freaking time like I can't help myself. We haven't even talked about the relationship itself. Have we been talking about that? Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Good point. I don't know. It's just <laughs> it's just such a good episode. It's just such a good episode. But like, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I'll be I'll be honest. Yeah. I feel like we don't get to see how the relationship develops all the time but like i mean they always just pick it up in the best way i mean i just yeah i love the fact that like sprig is at a point where he just doesn't flip out anytime he's flirting with Spry like or with ivy like it just i mean i'm sorry but the boy he has the risen and it just comes out naturally it just comes out naturally at that point like i'm so proud of spring like it's i don't know it's just great yeah and uh I'm thinking, is there anything else to talk about for Spry V? I mean, there's stuff at the end of the show, but like we'll 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 get to that when we get to the to the end. Um But it's just Spry V is wholesome and uncontroversial. There's so there's so little to discuss. <laughs> they're just they're just fun. <laughs> they're just fun. And they're funny. And they're fun. I just think they're neat. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, literally, like that. That could be. Yeah, that's the next edition of the meme. Okay. 
Okay, then I guess we can... Let me get comfortable. Uh... <laughs> actually, actually, not to take a point. Let me, let me do a quick switch. A quick what? I'm going to switch over to my phone. My iPad's about to die. Give me like one second. Okay, so um, Sun Sphere, I think I'll let you talk. start the talk conversation about... Uh... The about the, Commander Anne. It's the reintroduction of Sasha into the show, and uh, w- would you like to talk about? It? I feel like I feel like you're the one of the Sasha fans here. Oh goodness, that okay? Wait, wait, well, that wait, moment. Wait, let me. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, so apparently... I, can, I can count on you guys while I while I take a yeah, look. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man just wants to avoid all of that. Um, it's it's just it was one of those moments that made everybody go, "Oh my goodness, it's Sasha and time. Yeah. There can be no heterosexual relationship." Uh, rel- Explanation, explanation for this. this. Oh my goodness, my brain breaks down. Uh, like, <laughs> it's it's big melodrama, and uh, is there much more to it? Outside of it being just big melodrama, a lot of what it is is reflecting on how Sasha now kind of really looks up to Anne and really cares about her opinion. Yeah. And is a reflection of the uh, hold on a per- hold on a second. This Anne is actually kind of a real good person. That yeah, three B was Sasha and strikes to. back. Like essentially, it <laughs> it, 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 it comes it comes back in full. Yeah. Yeah, like oh no, it, it was literally it, it it was it was the payoff, like the freaking payoff that Sasha and fans were waiting for for years, man. And there is no way they were going to let it go. Like mm-hmm. because no because 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 what was what was making so many people resist was the yeah, obviously like yeah the toxicity right but then as soon as those doors opened they came out full force and never like it was the whole run man the whole I feel like it was the whole run for season three like literally the whole run for season three it was pumping it was pumping it got strong on three B but it was pumping and pumping and pumping <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take over pick you, you you're gonna talk I'll let you take over I just, dude, there was that like there was the copy pasta the in in Commander and Sasha's revealed to be attracted to Rowan. That was it. <laughs> that was the, that was it. that was the coffee pot. Oh, fuck! I forgot oh. about. Oh my god! I forgot about that. Was that. Funny. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Was that was stupid. It was so funny. Well, that's that's like a key temp to be a phantom. Let's be real here. How did, well, how, did even, how did they even start? I forgot how. They I don't started. know. Was, oh, was, no, people man, were trying to manifest it. Oh. No, but God, no, but yeah, there was just so yeah. much unbridled hype for um, Sasha. I, re- I remember like Matt literally just released like a tweet where he just said Sasha, like literally just the word, just the name Sasha, just Sasha. Not have anything else. Then he got like thousands of likes. Like I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, like they, I think like turning point was definitely like. Because Sasha is, like, crying over, like, oh, my God, look how much I betrayed Anne. Oh, like, Mark stabbed in the chest. Didn't say anything. So, like, <laughs> like it, it felt like the show was prepping you for, like, Sasha and Anne to, like, to come together. You know what I mean? Once 3B happened. But obviously. But, like, you can tell, like, by season three, like, when they realize, oh my gosh, Sasha's growing as a character. She's developing. She's changing. Like, this is like the perfect shot. And then the show just like gave you all the material to work with. And you could just keep going from there. And the fandom went crazy. So, And yeah. I mean, yeah. Basically every Sasha fan everywhere was just waiting for the redemption arc to actually kick into gear. Because we spent two and a half seasons of knowing it was happening. Two, two and a half, yeah, two and a half entire seasons of knowing it was com- gonna come, and just waiting for it to actually happen. Yeah.
Yeah, that like uh, that's sorry. great. Yeah, great thoughts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, oh, okay, I, okay. I, 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 I was there. Okay, I, I know, I know. I, I guess the, I know what you guys said. I let me guess. It was about how like, I'm guessing you guys talked about how Sasha, like. This is something like you. Everyone was waiting for her to become like a, an ally, and a good yeah. guy. And, and yeah, but now that she's a good guy, it's like she's gone through her trials, and now she's ready to be shipped with Anne. <laughs> and it's it's like... time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. It was go time. Like <laughs> you guys need to speak for yourself about villains. I love villains. <laughs> Hey, no, 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 I, I, I've been on Team Sasha since, like, season one, thank you very much. She looks like a real one, for real. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, she hey, was always hey, the villain no. that had a redemption arc in her, even from, like, literally prison break. So... It, it's true, it yeah. Just, yeah, I think just, yeah, I mean, okay, well, nah, not to lose focus, but, I mean, again, it's just, uh, I've just got to give props to Finn for trying something different, like, Never would have expected her. Yeah, you could tell. Yeah, okay, okay. She might be the. She might be like you know the redemption arc character of the show. But no one expected her to literally just double down right after the first season. No one saw that shit coming. No one ever like no one. No one even conceived that. I didn't see anyone thinking she was just gonna screw up again. And so I didn't think she was gonna double down in two colors too. though. Yeah. I mean, before yeah. like we saw the like, yeah. double down I, part. I mean, I think, yeah, I think until, until we got around then, I feel like, but back in season one, I feel like if anyone predicted anything, I feel like no one predicted her just doubling down. I feel like at that point, everyone was just like, okay, all right, she'll probably start a redemption arc uh, somewhere in season two. No one thought, like, it was gonna actually going to start in the, like, been beginning of season three, you know what I mean? Like, that, that, was, that was crazy. But, yeah, we okay, kind of... Okay. Hmm. Oh, sorry, no, go we, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, we kind of expected her to start being uneasy in Toad Catcher, where she kind of was, but... So we saw that, we weren't like surprised by its absence but yeah she kept on she kept on going and she kept on making choices rather than proceeding with the redemption arc at a, the pace that some of us might have wanted it to go at i yeah. think that's what makes her redemption so good though like if sasha just like, oh agree what one episode like she's like evil. <laughs> okay, I'm good now. Like, <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. There's gotta be like, there's gotta be build up. There's gotta be struggle. You know what I mean? Like, there's gotta be something to that arc that makes it feel like Sasha has to earn redeeming herself. It's not like Anne just tells her like, "You suck," in like one time, and then Sasha gets better. You know, it's gotta happen yeah. two times. That's what makes for it sure, interesting. Sure. But, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have better. expected. Her to immediately have um, redeemed herself by two episodes, but I don't know. Those those, those are kind of a bit off track. Eh? Yeah, I don't think the amount of show dedicated to her redemption arc ever negatively affected her redemption arc. Like I know there have been other shows in which many people have their their biggest complaint with it was that they felt like they spent too much time spiraling and doubling down on this character just to have them get their, like, proper redemption, the last episode, and think that everything's fine with that. Um, not to name any names. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> keep, her, keep her professional, keep her professional. Just keep going, just keep going. <laughs> but, okay. I feel like yeah, but sh- third of the show, to me, seemed like enough. I think like, the turning point had its issues, but I don't think the issue was ever, like, Overall, the season of her, her arc. I think her arc yeah, is yeah. well planned. Yeah. Well. yeah. I mean, like, I don't want to go on a tangent about the turning battle. It's another talk. Not a battle, another talk. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think her arc. <laughs> no, no, it's a positive talk. It's a positive talk. <laughs> but, um, we had a whole like, episode on turning point. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, I felt like Sasha's arc feels earned to this point, but I also like that Sasha and Anne aren't just completely like, buddy-buddy either. It's different from how season two was. Because season two makes it so then Anne doesn't like fully trust Sasha and like, they're still dealing with their beef and reunion. But like 3B handles it like a little differently, where you can tell Anne is really trying to give Sasha that shit. But like, as soon as 
Sasha fucks up in any way or like and immediately thinks, oh no, she's back to where she was instantly. And then like Sasha immediately proves her wrong and the audience wrong each time. So I like that like Sasha and Anne still struggle, but you can tell that Sha- Sasha's like really trying her best to make this whole like dynamic work. So yeah. It was great. I think what yeah. makes the relationship work, um, I mean, like, in canon relationship, not like any, like, romantic relationship, just what they have in the show work during season three is that they're both trying really, really hard to make it work. And, of course, they both make mistakes throughout that, but they still, like, they come off as, like, they really do come off as wanting to, like, Wanting to be better, both of them. Sasha yeah. or, and wants to trust Sasha if she can, and Sasha wants Dan to trust her. There's no like double crossing or like this character suddenly has suddenly has forgone all forgone all development and gone back or like suddenly has jumped way ahead. It's like it, neither of them are there yet, but they both want to be. Yeah. Plus, okay, I also I feel like I also got to mention Elf in the room. All right, we can't forget, and we can't forget, um, we can't forget what Matt said. I I I, I, rem- I remember I remember back in like, I think I think it was before All in happened before before the beginning of the end and uh, that other episode. Uh, sorry, sorry, th- the three armies and beginning again before all that happened. I remember he he admitted that they intentionally <laughs> allowed Sasha and Anne to have. And pickle, I'm gonna use the word "quote unquote" more intimate scenes. Come on, come on! You, it was happening. Wait, it was what, happening. What did he like say they, that? Got, they got all. It was like it was in an interview. It was an interview where he basically just said, like, I think it was before the finale, where he admitted that they were trying to make things lean somewhere in between where you could like argue for there being romantic feelings and just. What? Platonic feeling. So I'm, I'm not lying. It was there. I, I swear. It was there. I, don't I, just, that. I just swear. What? Am I, am I crazy? I wait, wait, what? You, thought, you, thought, you know what I'm talking about, right? What, what, am I the only one? To, okay, hold on. Like, now I gotta. Now I gotta pull this. Now I gotta pull I this. I thank that. God. I pinned this. I pinned this in Amphibia Talk months ago. Thank God for that. I never thought that would come in handy. All right. Well, well Nick thank does you. That. Each... Um. All right. Found it. Oh. I need... <laughs> <laughs> Because no, that's why, like, that's why you know they were getting all touchy feely. I'm, I'm almost saying, like, they were literally like, <laughs> that's why you got so many blushes. Even so, like, you'd be like, <laughs> and then would it make you like? There were just so many blushing moments in like three V. So many, just I don't know. You guys don't know what I'm getting at. Man, so, man, the what show, the show is walked that there was a bunch like, of the show walked the tightrope. So like. Yeah, it was like, it was like... It, they were doing like tricks and flips, but like, <laughs> like I don't know, like I know, like, like I don't think people really like seriously consider like they. I don't. I haven't seen like a okay queer baiting. I don't think people consider amphibia like. Doing nah. that, but like, yeah, I don't, yeah, nah, not, not yeah. any reason though. But like, the show gets so like close. They they fly close to yeah, the sun, literally. like, yeah, <laughs> like the da- <laughs> no, like the dance, like the, the battle, no. uh, beginning to the end, like the the dance dance yeah. revolution battle, like that was. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I and, definitely like, have a implies like a level of romance <laughs> that was put in specifically yeah. to like trick people into watching the show and giving them money. Yeah. They just yeah. kind of went with the flow. Yeah, they just literally, yeah, they just, yeah, I, I, was, I feel like looking back, that's just such a nice thing to do. They did, I feel like it's just not appreciated enough. Cause it's just, come on. Like, I feel like that's just, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't want to bring up any drama for other shows, but it's just, I don't know. I think that was just an incredibly nice thing they did. They, they saw that there was just a chunk of the fandom that I guess they didn't feel like they were properly representing. So they, thought, they said, like, hey, let's tweak it a bit. Let's just give them something to you know that they'll really enjoy and like. Damn, you know that is that is a nice thing to do that like not all shows do. It's also true that you know no matter what it, I mean, canon's kind of a hard word because 
like what is canon is it the word of the creator is it the word of the creators plural because there are many crew members that ship them and many that don't like yeah it's it's up to interpretation like by definition of canon yeah. they're the reason that it's shippable is because crew members made it that way in the first place yeah <laughs> Yeah, and there's um, there was oh my god, yeah, like no, I, I, it was just so funny after Commander Ann, like so many, like so many the bar owners, they just be like, yeah, I put that there on purpose. They, no, no, someone be like, wait, wait, what does this blush mean? What does this blush mean? And then, <laughs> then they just put down a smug emoji or something, <laughs> like like they knew what they're doing. <laughs> oh man, that dance scene did go hard. It, it really did. did. It, it did. did. It was like. Uh, and like, I was really uh, convinced by it for wait, a bit. Oh, oh shit! Wait, wait, how, wait! Oh, how could we forget? No, wasn't there literally this scene right before it where, 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 where they're holding hands and Anne's like, "Just, oh, just look what we yeah, have now." Oh, oh, yeah, that made me go like, "Wait, wait a minute!" One. That, yeah, that was the one. That, that was made me raise an eyebrow. Like, hold on, yeah, like, that was the one. <laughs> like, now that was the one. Like, it was just, it was so like. Now that is, that, I know I'm allowed to use the word intimate with that. There was pure intimacy. Okay, I'm not, even, I'm not, even, oh, I'm not exaggerating. Like that, that was yeah, the one. The way, way Brenda's song gave that line. I was like, I was like swooning over like the after the rain callback, and then when that came up, I was like, wait, hold up. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 a bit afterwards because I kind of went and reflected and went, hold on a minute, I have absolutely been in not that exact position, but I've done very much synchronized partner dances with people I'm definitely not involved in. So <laughs> there is proof. There's always somebody who's had a weird experience. <laughs> but yes, no, no, no. It, 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 it big vibe, it big vibe. I mean, I have a funny story with the, uh, once we get to the, the journal talk, <laughs> but yeah, yeah like I, I, get, <laughs> I get what Sunscreen means, like, <laughs> um, what else? <laughs> I mean, there's also the fact that, like, what else we have? I think with almost anything where it's, like, implied or balanced, like, the idea that something literally cannot be platonic is just kind of silly to me just because I have friends who straight up like kiss their best friends on the lips and do not mean anything by it. Wait, what? I know for uh... a fact. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let them finish. I I'm serious. I mean it's <laughs> I, I'm I'm serious. I, I know people who I guess it's more of a kiss on the cheek thing usually, but like almost anything, various culture, and yes, I'm in yes, I'm in theater, but uh, between various cultures and between various stuff, like it's, everything diff is different based on context. It's it's all it's all based on just the relationship between the two people, and there can absolutely be friendships way stronger than any romance in that person's life. Yeah, us, us theater kids have a uh, different expectations of <laughs> <laughs> interacting with others at times. Huh. Uh, yeah. Oh, there, was a, there was a lot of friend to friend, always, actual, actively uh, platonic hugs going around. I'm always waiting for Thumb. I was waiting for Thumb to say something. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm just a number two, I'm just yeah, a number two I, guy. I got, I got nothing. I mean, I mean do, do, we, are, are there, do we need to talk about like Anne Darcy stuff? Like, I think that's just mostly Anne. What? Angst. Do we need to? Angst, yeah. Yeah. Angst, I think it's kind of like Mercy within Darcy, but Anne and uh, Darcy is a hive mind collection of a bunch of a thousand year old newts. That's not really a yeah. A that's, that's a little thing. weird. Okay, I, yeah. Uh, right. 
<laughs> oh wow, I'm the weird one now. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. I guess God. I- I'm looking at the list. Um, we talked about. I think we covered all the, like the the stuff between the trio, unless yeah. Is there anything? Well, I mean, we can. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, I mean, the, there's the big one, but I mean, we we can throw that at the end. All right. Yes. We, okay, oh, now we can. Get, ooh, let's go with that. Yeah, so I think we're gonna go over the kind of like uh the. I guess how does well, the the bonus, the bonus shows. Yes, <laughs> the bonus bonus. The DLC. Um. I guess let's let's start with the the actually all these are canon. You know, okay, we'll start with the non <laughs> we'll start with the the non canon one. Or, um, grime pop. How do you even pronounce? Oh, grime pop. Yes, <laughs> dude. Oh my god. <laughs> like, when when did this happen? Like I feel like it was like after season two. Dude, I have like I don't. No, I think it, I, I have no clue. It, it just it was there for some I mean, as a the joke, cool. seriously, because both happened like, in both. different time periods. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I, no I, I yeah, actually, no yeah, I like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think six. Oh, like, no, like, like, six yeah, I want to say. I want to say. I have, I have no comment other than <laughs> that one question asked during the gallery nucleus Q and A that was like, "Oh, Bill Farmer, can you can you say Grime, I love you in Hop Pop's voice?" And he actually did. And now yeah, that's I the thing. <laughs> no, I, I I love like the like like the oh my god. I, I, I love like the stuttering. He was like, Grime, I, I love you. <laughs> like, the, yeah, that, oh. <laughs> Man, Bill was Farber perfect. is such like a good sport. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You know, he was probably was so confused. Yeah, literally. Yeah. He, was, he was probably confused. He was just like, know, all right, like, I'll do it for the fans. <laughs> like, I like that spirit. Matt has like, I forget if he like liked it or like reblogged some crew members. And he was like, sort of like, Grime and Hot Pop poorly cropped onto like, like a, a pregnant photo shoot thing. Oh yeah, no, the, yeah, there, there was that. I <laughs> about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, and it was like, yeah, it was like, like this once. Oh my god, yeah, no, that was hilarious. I mean, every fandom means the like meme ship that people sort of take semi seriously sometimes. Although I admit. Cool. I, I like, like made the grime pop jokes before it was a thing, and then it became canon. And I was like, "Oh, okay, that that happened." Or not canon? Fuck. It became <laughs> like <laughs> it became something that more people actually like shipped unironically. And I was kind of like, "I did not know this was gonna happen." I feel like the only thing that bothers me about the ship is like the age difference. Like, I don't know how old Grime is supposed to be, but like, isn't he like? I mean, I feel like forty. He's old. He's just like no, I, feel like, no, I feel like he's old. I feel like old. I don't think there's any. Yeah. Really. I never got an age, like, but I feel like uh, definitely near near Hop Hop's age. I feel like really. Well, I feel like he's younger uh, than well, Hop maybe Hop, younger. But he's, he's still old. Yeah, like, yeah maybe late forties, early fifties. I'm gonna put around there. So like larger like, age I'm, gaps are more acceptable when both people are a lot older. So yeah, I'm putting them around it, there. I mean, yeah. it's totally not because I'm a Hop Sil- like a ride or die Hop Sylvia fan. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's a that, that's, that's yeah, no the effect. Bias. That's no bias on my opinion of Hop of Grime Pop. Oh fuck! Uh, Grime always struck me as being in like his fifties. Yeah, I think like Beatrix yeah, just threw me off because Beatrix seems vibe. a lot younger to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I don't know. I, um, maybe maybe a lifetime of roughing it in the South Tower just fucked up Grime or something. I mean, like because <laughs> it seemed like Beatrix was better off. Is all I'm saying. Like Grime was like. Dude, I don't know, man. I was saying, like, dude, dude lost his hair. Like, it looks like he lost his hair. Like, he was completely balded. I mean, Beatrice, he has like a full lock of hair. Like, what happened to that? Wait, if, isn't Beatrice like, older I, than? Gr- Actually, no, I'm getting off topic. Yeah, yeah. Grime Pop is. <laughs> yeah, Grime Pop. Grime Pop's the best shit. I think Beatrix is older. Yeah, she's older. Like, older? Yeah, because she she calls him little bro, like in the turning. Okay. Point, yeah. Right. So, like, yeah. I mean, she might just look good for her age, too. That That's, yeah. It did seem like the, like, leaders of the towers were, like, the more, el- the, like, el- the senior, like, more weathered toads who had, like, been through a lot more and had the respect. 
Yeah, that's true. Okay, now we can talk about the cannon ships. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm thinking, um... How do we want to do this? Like, do we want to talk about... Okay, we'll talk about Barrel, Leaf, Andreas. Then Toady Stool, then Olivia, and then oh. Joe Spressy. Uh, Joe Spressy, Spressy, yeah, okay. So let's start with Barrel, Andreas, and Leaf. That was like... <laughs> Yeah, that was. Wait, is that? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh wait, wait. oh wait, no, sorry, I, Nick, you're I, right. I we forgot to talk is. about. There's so, oh, there's so many. There's like, we forgot to yeah, talk about. Uh, like, they keep sprouting out. B Tonio, B Tonio, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Beatrix and and uh, Tritonio. That was mostly like yeah. the product of. Um. Alicia Rocha. Rocha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, yeah, Ferocia. Like, did she? I don't know. It was just okay. What I found so funny was that, like, she always apologized. She always say, like, "Sorry, guys, for spamming this shit." When everyone's like, "No, no, no, keep it coming. This is what we want. This is what, this is what we all want to see." And she was like, "Sorry, sorry, but no, no." I, I, honestly, I don't know. I, I, I like the ship. I, I like the fact that I know I said this before back in the three hours. I just love the fact that Trintonio just went from like being this completely one-off character to like somehow becoming like one of the most important characters in the show. That is that is insane. That is insane. But like, yeah, Betonio. I don't know. I think it's like that classic, like, yeah, the string bean guy and like the macho woman. I, I mean, I I like that. Like, I'm not gonna call it bad. Yeah. Like, is there? Yeah. Like, oh, go Betonio ahead, is a weird one because I feel like. I feel like Betonio is like that ship that like I don't hear a ton of talk about it per se in the in the fandom itself yeah like i mean matt said it was canon. <laughs> well really? yeah but, he was like wait like for real no he was like, like i actually don't i think he just said i ship it or he said something that like <laughs> i think he said like he like, just said not? okay like when seeing it just <laughs> okay but the thing is like <laughs> ferocia had this like ready to go like months in advance <laughs> yeah, like she was shipping it when was... it was like when they were doing the episode and just had like a they, like they... a backlog ready to go like <laughs> they interact in the battle in the, the three armies at like some point right they have like one line to, or like yeah. they look at each other at least <laughs> which is which is more than some things can say then i guess we can talk yeah. about the the can now we can talk about the cannon ships <laughs> I guess let's. I'll, I'll let Nick decide. Do you want to talk about? Uh, let's uh, let's see. Let me, let me look at the list. It's either Toady Stool or Olivia. Which one do you want to talk about first? I feel like Toady Stool might be better to start to. Let's, yeah, let's do Toady Stool. All right, Toady Stool. <laughs> okay. Go, let's... go ahead, Nick. <laughs> yeah, th this is a complicated one for me because I'm gonna be honest, man. I was so unsure of how old Toady even was. <laughs> Like for the entire, I'm not joking. For the entire series, for the entire series, yeah. I, no yeah. I had no clue. I was like, because he seemed like his ward, right? He seemed like Toadstool's ward. So I was like, okay, he must be like, I don't know, maybe he's just around Sprig's age or something. Then, 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 then like, um, the shut and cemented that thought. What? Yeah, yeah, like, uh, like, what did they do with the ballet band? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, the ballet band is so weird because yeah, the, the ballet band, and then like he gives off advice, just this hard advice that just feels like sort of like lifetime earned and it's like wait like, how are you like, how old are you again little frog and then like i guess they i don't know and, and then there's also just the fact that like let's be honest toaster was abusive to him i mean like i'm never gonna forget that one scene in return the reward wood where like you know what I mean? He, he uses a shield. He used Tony. Yeah, he uses a shield to block like a torrent of fire blasting at him. That ends like, wow, that's smart, Toadstool. How did you? How did you? Wait, what? What did she say? She's like, like, oh, using wow, using Tony's like stone body as a shield. Oh yeah, yeah exactly that. And then she's like, then he was like, wait, he's stone. <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> what? One of, one of the yeah, best jokes in the like, show. Kill him. He was ready to kill him. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I mean, like, it feels like Tony's written as an adult. I can't tell what happened with the shut-in, if they, like, forgot, or if it was supposed to be poking fun at him for being small, or, like, what was going on there. Like, 
Yeah, the shotgun is what like it was like. Mm, shotgun is just weird, and it was like, yeah. How that would like that makes if Tony was a child, like obviously for the ship, it'd be. But like, I don't know, like Toadstool having like a random kid work for him, like I don't, I don't know, like, mm. it, like, I felt like I felt like you kind of had to. His size makes him look like a kid, but like, I assume like. I don't know. I, I didn't feel like Toady was a kid. He felt like he was written as an adult. Like, his size was, like, questionable, so it was, like, in this weird limbo that Matt had to pretty much just, like, con- he's, like, just as old as, like, Toadstool. Yeah. yeah. The best, the <laughs> oh, Sasha's Whoa. Angels had that really funny line about how, like, <laughs> after he beats oh. up everyone, so he's like, oh, this is how I dress to, uh, Toadstool every morning. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was kind of a. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't well, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. <laughs> might be my just everlasting hatred for for, for uh Toad to Redemption, but what? the whole like Toadstool Toady dynamic makes me so uncomfortable, child or not. It's just weird in that episode. Like, what? Why are they doing like a like like weird? It's just, it's uncomfortable to watch that ending scene. I just can't. It's just, why did they add that? I don't understand. Oh, oh is, it, is it where, like, oh, like jumps in his arm and then, like, a whimper? Yeah. yeah. And then he's, like, yeah, treating him like a boot, like a baby. Like, oh, okay, okay yeah, that was weird. I, I, I guess, didn't everyone, didn't everyone get, like, disgusted by it or something? Like, I can't remember. Yeah, like, yeah the episode. It was supposed to be weird, it. but it was still uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah like, I, I just don't know how to feel about this. Because I feel like, Toadie and Toadstool, I feel like, don't, like, I don't feel like they have enough, like, of a progression for me to be like, yeah, I'm in a, I'm, like, invested into this ship. It was kind of like, it felt like it just kind of happened in the finale, and I didn't even know it was. It didn't happen. It It just kind of, like, Matt said it. It was weird. I remember there was like that one. Oh, <laughs> it was pretty funny. But I remember like um, Matt mistook art of like Toady and like Toad, so it was like shipping art. <laughs> and like the artist was like, "No, oh yeah." Like that. <laughs> it was like that. It was hilarious. That was hilarious. Yeah, I think the like, artist thought, thought of them as like father and son. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, <laughs> and it Matt was art of, like. like <laughs> Yeah, Matt thought it was like shipping art. No, Matt was like low as low. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> um <laughs> Chuck, yeah, Chuck posted the, the tweets. <laughs> um Oh my god. Yeah, that was fun. I, I guess. <laughs> Okay, before we get to Olivia, I think we'll because that has a lot of like history. We'll we'll talk about Beryl, Andrus, and Leaf because like that was like I feel like I think Danny Ducker she mentioned it best. It was basically like like Beryl was watching his girlfriend and boyfriend argue, <laughs> and then and then like and then having no idea that they separated like. <laughs> <laughs> like I, there's not was much I, to talk I, about. It's just like everyone kind of like collectively agreed that it's like, yeah, everyone was just like, I, I like how there's literally no one, no one argued, no one was just like, oh yeah, Andreas breaking up his no exes, good. no, Andreas invents racism because of a breakup. Like everyone, no one argued, <laughs> no one argued with those thoughts. Everyone was just like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <Fine. laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. I appreciate being assigned to these things now. <laughs> I remember, wait, wait, no, there was, um, shit. oh, yeah, I got to shout out Das and Trash, like, listen, if we're, we're going to bring up the, tr- if we're going to bring up the OG trio, I'm always going to mention Das and Trash, literally, su- yeah. like, supplied us video. with, like, literally, our, consistently supplied us with art on, like, the OG trio for, like, way over an entire year yeah, before like, we even got their debut, yeah. episode. Like, they were the only one doing it consistently. Literally. Yeah, like the moment I did we not got see, see any other artist. Yeah, the moment we got to see, I think a uh, glimpse 
of like Leaf and I think True. No, actually, I think it was before True Colors. Like, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Sleepover Ten Sleepovers. Sleepover. Yeah. So that's when Dash and Trash. What's her? How do I say her pro, her name? Dash and oh, uh, yeah, Dash and Trash. Dash and Trash. Yeah, she Dash was, and Trash. Yeah, she. That's when she started. <laughs> and like, man, like she was like committed forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, like there was no one else. There was no one else doing what they did. And like, it was and, and like the art and the art is amazing too. Like God, just like I feel like they did just capture like the, like the gravitas of like of the relationship before we even got the debut like i don't know to me like their portrayals of them just felt so authentic and we didn't even get any screen time with them besides like those five seconds were like you know you know what i mean like they're next to andrews and then they disappear in the flashback that was all we got but my god was it amazing oh yeah and yeah i think like yeah i, I don't know what else to say it was just like that <laughs> yeah Yeah, I think it was Danny Ducker who talked about it um, in a tweet. I, I just don't know where it is, but I know it was there, 100%. Like, uh... Okay, I guess we can talk about Olivia then. Okay. It's a big one. Yeah, this was like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like the moment also... like we had... Olivia and Yunnan like on screen together in true colors like apparently behind the scenes like Danny Ducker and someone else I forgot who sorry like it was like it was two board it was two people like they were like they asked Matt and Matt was like okay like yeah sure <laughs> like, like, you know, that's just like, and I think oh I, I know Danny Ducker posted like the Zelda and Link art except with like yeah Olivia and yeah. that that set a lot of people off like yeah that, that started it yeah that spawned it like no it was so funny because like I feel like yeah people saw that I think it was that before True Colors there when they dropped that art I think it was right yeah no I think it was after yeah because I thought Okay, yeah, because I think like, I, I think might have been before. I can't remember. I can't remember. But like, I just know that yeah, it just made a lot of people speculate. Like, huh? Like, oh, is something gonna happen like, canon wise with these two, right? And like, you know, I think that was that's what was so funny. Like, because, yeah, because I, I know. Yeah, wasn't there like a ton of like you and Livia hype going into Olivia and Yunnan? Yep. Or something like wasn't her ton of hype? Yeah, oh, yeah. there was an insane amount of hype. Yeah, there was like, a ton of hype. Why is yeah. that a question? <laughs> yeah, it was, the episode when we found it was literally called Olivia and Yunan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, because like they have that moment. More specifically, Olivia has that you moment with Yunan where she introduces Yunan and gets rid of all of the flutter trees, and it has that almost like. Everyone kind of interpreted it as, as like old married couple kind of vibes, and that's kind of where it started. At least, like in show. And I gotta mention the elephant in the room. They have a red and blue color scheme. <laughs> what else can we talk about? For, like, I feel like for all these like, yeah, like we're like, yeah, yeah. it happened. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, like yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Because like, yeah, because literally the non-canon ones, the fandom fills in the space as far as like the fandom just like. No, because I think that's just so. I think that's like the funniest thing about people. I feel like, I mean, it, 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 technically that was you, Nan, hmm. like Olivia, because like we were filling the gaps, yeah. but then it happened at the end, so we we're just like, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, well. Okay, one one interesting thing is how much in shipping the two of them they were brought up as like uh Anne's no Marcy's parental figures in Utopia. And that was a thing for a while, uh them being yeah, the newt mums. And the great that leads into the great tragedy oh my God. of it wasn't like that because no. Marcy never really got to know them and that was one of her big 
um, I wish I had. And that kind of comes in tandem with the whole Olivia ship in general. Yeah. 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 We never got to really meet her, like, her team outside of the journal. Even that team yeah, did... was kind of like... That was, that was her, like, yeah, fun was... roleplay team. She didn't, she didn't seem to have... I mean, she, like, seemed to care about them, but she seemed to care about their, like, perks and shipping and, like... Ooh, she was, yeah, she was, like, she was, like, was, like, she was, like more of, like... Yeah. I don't think, like, Marcy was taking the initiative to realize that she could make, like really strong connections here. Like, she's not connecting the dot. Like, Anne has to. So, you know what I mean? She's always thinking about, like, Anne and Sasha and where they are, even though, which makes sense, obviously, she sent them, like, even though she has, like, this legitimate group of friends and people with her, but that might be, like, whole discussion in the journal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I get you mean impact. Like, and Sun Sphere, yeah, like the point's like a lot of the Olivia hype also is entered like is is like yeah, is also part of like the mom the the newt mom uh desire yeah. for Marcy. And and then like even yeah. in like Olivia Yunan, it's like Olivia's like, Oh, Marcy's smart, let's free her because she's smart. <laughs> And then Yunnan's like, wait, but all these humans are backstabbers, though. It's like, oh, like, I, I, yeah, wasn't, yeah, like, I wasn't too... Oh, yeah, that, that, that was yeah. GG. So, yeah, yeah I, like, I wasn't <laughs> too invested in the Newt mob thing, but, like, that still, like, hurt me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's stung. <laughs> that's stung. Like, yeah, that's yeah. stung. But then and they, they like, do okay, show like, genuine I, I concern like... for her near the end. Yeah, yeah, like, Olivia, like, yeah, Olivia is saving Marcy to stop Andreas. But I also feel like Olivia is also like a morally just character too. You know what I mean? It felt like she was also saving Marcy because it is also the right thing to do there in that situation. Mm -hmm. I never felt like, I don't know, like a lot of people give this interpretation that like Olivia, Olivia and you know, don't know Marcy extremely sure. Well, okay, more like Olivia knows Marcy, but not super well. But I never thought of her just being like, Save Marcy just to stop Amphibia. I, I always thought there was... Yeah. It felt like the character was more morally just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, look at look at what Yunnan does as soon as Marcy gets out. She's got a blanket that's going to be for what she's taken care of. Yeah. Yunnan's a little less also morally... I mean, Yunnan's moral compass seems to be a little more oriented to fighting and killing and keeping herself alive. So she was a little more like, yeah. I'm gonna shake you awake. But I think that the contrast between you and Olivia and then like them sorta of, like if they didn't really get to know Marcy, them like growing to actually like appreciate her instead of just being like an asset over over like that little while they actually could talk to each other. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, and it's it's so I find it so, like, not, like, evil by the crew. Like, <laughs> Marcy mentions, like, oh my gosh, they're, like, they make a team, and then, like, immediately all that shit happens with the possession or whatever, and they never get to, like, be a group in the show ever again. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's... Yeah, like, I do like them making that connection, like, after Olivia and Yunan, like, that's <laughs> There's, we're not getting any more after that point, aside from like a few little instances and in, at the end of the show. And even then, Olivia and Yuna don't get like a ton of stuff to do in the finale, which really I didn't hear people complain about that much. I didn't hear anyone go like say anything about that, which I guess makes sense. Olivia and Yuna yeah. don't get to do a lot in this season, so it's they don't get like a huge amount, but they do get a good moment in the finale. They get like, I guess I'm just kind of thinking about the. Well, I guess they get the fight scene with Anne and Sasha. So like, even though they're possessed, but like. Oh, they if do they get have that. a possession scene, 
And then they have their fight against the cloak robots in the actual temple. And then, of course, they have their actual hardest thing moment as well. That's true. That's true. I guess I'm just thinking of it like big moment in the sense of like, you know, like Anne and Sasha and the planters get their own big fights or whatever. Which I, you know, I guess that makes sense to me. Characters we've had throughout the entirety of the show. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, uh, is there anything else we need to talk about for Olivia? I think we covered everything. Yeah. Okay. Then I think we can talk about the best ship of all. The one with the most foreshadowing the most payoff, the most satisfying. Oh wait, Percy and Braddock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I forgot about oh, that. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Oh my god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yo, I completely forgot about that. Oh, Percy and Braddock. They exist. They're a nice couple. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Like they were a couple of shows because not they only were, are they, they're awesome, nice. but they like stick by each other. Yeah, they're very. They were nice. the smartest couple I... in the show. <laughs> like they saw all this shit going down. They're like, not. Nah. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just not. Nah. They're just like hell no. They saw. Nah. They Ooh. saw all Sasha's toxicity, and they're like, we out. <laughs> they, they, they knew when to bail. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, there's so it's so. Man, I wish we got to see them. Yeah, it's damn. Like one part of me is like, oh wow, you yeah, know that's just that's just it makes the moment all the more better. But then it's also just like wow, you know. Imagine they just saw how much she grew and just yeah. I don't know. I don't know because I'm I'm always like divided on it because one hand like. I like that Sasha's like actions have like consequences that kind of matter for you know what I mean? But like at the same time I think like Sasha getting that closure would have been really nice for it would have been nice of Percy and Braddock to see like like <laughs> what's the word? Like Sasha how she's grown as a person. It gives Sasha that closure. It gives Percy and Braddock a chance to see how far she's come. So, yeah. Yeah. Man, screw Sasha's character arc. We I wanted to see them. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Nah, I'm, I'm uh, like... Speak for yourself. I'm far. I'm more than happy to sacrifice Percy and Braddock for. Sasha's character hook. Okay, how do I how do nah. I figure how do I how do I time out Sun Fury? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I am very willing to be the villain in this story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we covered. Okay, are there any other ships that? Okay, I, I know we have one ship left. <laughs> yeah, but yeah do we, we need to think. Like, do we need to go down like Croker and and Jared? What's his name? Oh my. oh my! Oh my! Poker and her stalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have. Yeah, I don't no, we don't. Yeah. That, nah, we don't gotta do that. <laughs> Apothecary and that yeah. other and that other lady yeah. mushroom. Nah, I, I know that wasn't real. Um, Let's see. We'll, we'll talk That's about the journal. Not we'll talk about hop, the journal hop, stuff. Like hop, the hop and mother home. Hop up and mother home. No. No, oh, that's, no not, that's not. Yeah. That's not how what? shipping works. <laughs> First, when two characters breathe in the same direction, <laughs> they had like one conversation. Uh, what else? <laughs> um, Tyler and that other guy, and like those those two humans. 
We are, that's we are, a we are, that's oh, a dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You know, oh, oh, that was hilarious. It's yeah, like the, with the guy with the TV. He's like, oh, oh she was like yeah. my son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, there it's like that. no, Tyler. I won't clown face you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a screwed over. Wait, did we... I mean, I don't know what to talk about for Ali and Jess, but we forgot about. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Ali, Ali and Jess. Jess. God, oh. Um, God yeah. damn it! How did we forget those two? All right, we got we got to do good? it. We got to do it. Yeah, we're gonna have like, like fifteen minutes yeah. for them to compensate. But they're great. Yeah, they're great. fun. I mean, yes. Yeah, really fun. I wish we got more of them. Honestly, like they're one of the few three A characters. I they're kind of like a combo, but like I wish we got more of just in the show in general. It felt like I don't know. This is just like I always thought that at least like. The IT gals would help at least make the portal, you know what I mean? Or something. Yeah. I think they did. But yeah, I, I like, know I know Impact, one of your like I know you've mentioned in the past, like like how all the three A characters were pretty solid and just it would have been nice to get more of them. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it just in general, like what's the word. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I would have liked to just have like the IT, I, I don't even know if the IT gals did help. It felt like it was more like just Terry built it and then Dr. Jan kind of helped a little bit by powering it. But like, it's not like the IT gals specifically like helped in the like the manufacturing part of it. You know what I mean? It's not too unreasonable to suggest that they probably were, but it's also probably. not explicitly stated. It's not like made clear, hey, this is what they were also doing, so yeah, I yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. The IT girls felt kind of sadly very censorable. Like, yeah, it was like one time they looked at each other and blushed, and like thing they could easily scribble down that mentioned they were girlfriends and like a little pride flag in the background. It's it's kind of too bad that that's what they had to work with. Same thing with yeah. the Unit and Olivia, although they had just a lot more development of their relationship platonic or romantic was you know it was like heavily implied but they never said we have started dating or anything like that yeah, yeah I mean, like with yeah, olivia yeah. you knew like you knew in the finale like, even if like <laughs> yeah like i think everyone could figure it out <laughs> you know what i mean like with ali and jess it's like yeah it's just so easy to just kind of like remove a blush or something or like change one like word in the sentence and then like they're not dating so it's like yeah and yeah six brought up the terry and dr jane i was thinking it too but like honestly there's, <laughs> there's not much you can talk about there i don't even yeah, know uh, like... there's literally nothing <laughs> yeah i don't even know <laughs> it, it's 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 neat that's that's my extent yeah, it, of my thoughts on it <laughs> Is there, is there anything else for yes. Any The best one. Bessie oh. and Joe Sparrow. Oh! Yes! <laughs> love is love, you know? Man, like... Love is love. Also brings up a whole bunch of confusing questions. Like, no. is, it like is it like breeding a donkey and a horse where you get a mule? Like... Can can the yes. snurs have children of their own? Is that a new species? Are they maybe are they like maybe? Uh, don't question it, <laughs> oh. Don't question it. <laughs> don't don't, 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 don't question it. You might write at Matt about that. Love is love. <laughs> and that's they had it. The yeah, war. let's. I don't even know how to say. It. I mean, it, it 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 was. I don't know. It it was like a very. I don't know, man. It was like a very funny thing they teased in season two, and I was never. And I feel like no one was ever sure if they were going to bring. Because here, yeah, because like they had that one moment. Literally, just had that one moment in like season two, and I don't think we ever got to see him interact again until literally the last episode. <laughs> and build and up we were and like, pay off. Oh, yeah, build up and pay off. Build up and pay off. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh... Okay, I think we covered all the ships in the show, but we 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 discussed the journal stuff a little bit. But uh, 
I, I think we can talk about it here now. Like, and let's try and focus on just the shipping stuff from the journal because, like, I'm planning on like we're planning on making videos for just like just the journal itself. So I guess who okay. here has read the journal? I think uh, Sunsphere Impact. You guys have read it. Yep, I've read it. Yep. Uh, Pickle, have you read it? Yeah. Sticks. Can I can pull it up? Yep. I got it. I got it right in my hand. Yeah, I have it right beside me too. But like, I haven't read it all like in, in its entirety. But like, Nick, have you read it? Uh no. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. Oh. Okay. I mean, Wait, what? do Wait, you mind wrong? if we talk about the shipping <laughs> stuff? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I already know they're moving in. Now I'm like, I think that's the biggest thing, right? Like, goddamn. Oh. <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa, what do you mean by that? No. <laughs> 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 okay, sweet what summer child, missing? Nick. If what you want, okay, missing, maybe. Oh boy, here we go. Nick, if you want, I can. <laughs> Nick, Nick, I can. I can DM you when we're done talking about the journal stuff. Uh, I mean, if it's just the ship and stuff, I don't really mind. I don't really mind. I guess I, I, I'll, I'll let myself be spoiled. It's, it's my own fault for not reading it before. I mean, I haven't read it either. I just read like I've read sections of the book, like, but like the previous sections. Or... Oh, oh, no, like I, I've read that. like parts of like the. I haven't read much of the the Marcy stuff, like the. The Newtopia stuff, even though I know it's like the newest content, but like I read a bunch of the Anne stuff. I read a bunch of the like post Anne Marcy reunion stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I guess the general the general vibe that I got from the journal was that like Marcy is a massive. Uh, Sasha and RC fan, and <laughs> when the opportunity presents itself, uh, makes that very clear to the journal. <laughs> yeah, like the the entirety of the journal is being, like, but all the shipping stuff of the is very like. So make Marcy will like gush over like Anne or Sasha or two pages. <laughs> it's it's very funny because I, I don't think that the journal necessarily like, how do I put this it is very shippy but like how do I put it I'm trying to put it in the best way possible I think it just simply expands upon like the dynamics we've had in the show thus far but like yeah I don't know I don't know how to explain it <laughs> yeah it's it's like kind of shippy, but also at the same rate, it's very much kind of pushing up how much Marcy kind of depends slash looks up to slash that kind of thing towards the other two parts of the trio. Like it it comes off as very, very one-sided in all of her depictions and kind of it kind of shows off her how much she loves the ideal of the trio as opposed to how it exists now yeah. because she talks a lot about them and talks a lot about her opinions on them but doesn't really but you know as we see in the show and everything she hasn't really connected the dots on actually how the day feel about everything in amphibia full stop yeah pretty much i think like in terms of like events that happen to the character yeah you're just getting more of like the seeing that kind of thing. yeah in terms of like actual events that happen to characters like in terms of shipping wise that doesn't really change too much besides the ending with like marcy like Sasha, like, allowing Marcy to move in with, you know, like, which just, it's not necessarily romantic, but, like, it gives the characters an opportunity to interact with Anne 
and like I've seen a lot of Sash RC like fan art just because of that alone. So like yeah, yeah. It it just gives that opportunity for some like and like without and having to be like the friendship necessarily, if that makes sense. Like it allows Sasha and Marcy like develop a relationship without having like and having to lift up that empathy side of things, if that makes sense. They have to do it on their own. Yeah, and um I like how the journal definitely is a lot braver in like just saying some things and sort of confirming some things compared to the the epilogue itself. The like in show epilogue. But like Matt ha- has said, like they're no matter what, they're like the latest we see them is when they're twenty three. There's still a lot of time for many different things to happen. They're this is still the beginning of their lives. Yeah. It's it's really hard for me to talk about the just shipping because it has so much the show itself. Like I'm trying to like find a way to word this with just making it shipping, but like it's so essential to like Marcy's like relationship with the girls is so important to her arc. It's like <laughs> I don't know how to like word this the right way. Like I think Sunshine did a good job. I'm just trying to like just put in the shipping, but like it's it's very hard for me to That that's all right. I think Nick and I got the general, yeah, gist of it. And like what you what I've heard, what I've read already, like it's like the the tone that Marcy and even Anne use in in the journal is very like I, I know uh one of the writers on the gamer uh, Jade King. They kind of like had a lot. They they kind of posted quite a bit of material that you know personally I wasn't that I wasn't a fan of because like I mean on one hand it like it gets people excited early on but it's like revealed a lot of stuff. Like I think she I think they yeah. revealed, I think they revealed like the last pages of one of the last pages and like. Okay, Nick, this isn't really a spoiler. Just like Marcy referred to like Sasha and Marcy as her loves, and people were really my like, loves. Like, I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, to be honest, like it's funny because like, but like my best friend like calls all of us like he all he always refers to us as like as loves too. So I was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I showed him that and he's like, he's like, so what, love? Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay it, it, it's really interesting because there are some people out, like who will say love you for it They're like i love you directly straight out to their best friends etc and not mean wow. any single thing like i do it yeah i do it and too. not mean anything more than that i because, love my bros yeah but <laughs> yeah 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 sometimes i'll just go uh, like, love you man there's oh, also yeah. some people who don't and the question ends up being, well, uh, what cave is it this time? Because it's not that clear. But... <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not that clear. I'm going to say it's up for reasonable interpretation. Yeah. Well, like, while Marcy calling them her loves does, like, obviously leave lots of shippiness to, like, if people want to read into it, it's not like, I think people who say that I think it's personally. I think it's undeniable that that was put in to give the shippers like a little treat, especially because I know that some people on the writing team are are into some of the ships. But I don't think that it's like, oh, she called them her loves. How could this possibly be platonic? Because like, come on, if you, if you don't love your friends, like, what, what are you what are you doing? <laughs> Do you not love your friends? <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I like I I I enjoy their presence from a reasonable distance. 
Like okay. real homies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> testosterone well well some having a tar- some having a poor relationship with his friends aside <laughs> do we want to get into like mainly Sasha and Arcee I think we kind of covered it after two colors, but like, and and in the journal here, but like, yeah. If you if there's anything else you want to add, oh oh, I just I just have to add in that I I'm like fairly sure Sasha and Arcee, and it's just like a general prevalence and acceptance in the fandom is one of the big reasons we just like never had a ship for. Yeah, yeah, literally. Like, yeah, like there's the three yeah, there's, there's like, yeah. yeah. There's it, always it, something to just like just so lay back on, like Leia. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it was always just like... Oh, it was sorry, a hot you, bed. you go ahead, yeah. Like, the trio was would have been a hotbed for, like, complete ri- big rival reason because they're all mutual. Like, if you would come at it from... um, What a... If you come at it from all motto, um, they're all exclusive, exclusionary, and if... One of them doesn't hook up with the rest, and they're kind of off having an unhappy ending. So people are being all, so people could have been all. Well, no, I want my character to have a romantic ending, so I'm going to fight anybody who excludes that from happening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that just like didn't happen. Yeah, like so much of the community just went. You know what? This just put we're just going to polish it them, <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. It happened, and it saved, quite possibly saved the fandom. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, because the, the problem was, like, with a lot of the ships with the girls is that, like, the three of them are a set. You know what I mean? Like, they're, when you put, like, like, with Sasha and three like, in C's in 3B, like, one of the things that's very funny is that a lot of times in like fan art or fix or whatever, Marcy is always like round. <laughs> it's like the, the third wheel. And then with Marsan, it was Sasha who was the third wheel. So it's like Sasha and Arcy just like there's no bullshit. <laughs> it's just like everything just there's an equilibrium there. There's balance in the you know, like there's there's no one being left. That makes sense. It's also kind of. I think a lot of shows, way relationships are often written is like. The the uh, there's like, two characters interact and then, there's several several sets of two characters and they're all interconnected. But I think something that's really unique and well done about their relationship is that the three of them together have, their own full dynamic. It's not just it's it's like. They're the trio. It's not just three duos together. That does make Sasha and RC the more like viable option, and just like have its own thing going on that that would make make some sense. Yeah, and like the show is just constantly having like the theme of like three of anything. You know what I mean? And the show like never wants one of the girls to just be like completely missing out if that makes sense even with saw shannon in season three it's like the entire focus of the beginning of the end is that marcy is not <laughs> you know like i mean yeah that's like, like the, it's it's that's it the it's the main point of the sh- not main point but it's like it's talked about on the show it's like ann and mark when when ann and marcy or ann and marcy are together sasha's freaking out when Sasha and Anne are together, Marcy Marcy feels left out. And then you have yeah. Anne feeling like she's left out and doesn't mm-hmm. have anything to bring to the group. It's like <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. then like and then like the show makes us like makes the fandom like sympathize with all of them. Like it's like they have it's like there's different reasons for the fandom to like support each of the girls for the same issue. That's like, we never got a ship war out of it because it's like, the show kind of addressed it, like. Yeah. 
be honest, I didn't know that polyamory existed before I watched this show. Well, now you oh, know. really? Wow. Ooh, yeah, now you know. Like, I'm like, amphibious, amphibious thing, thing, or, like, thing with, like, like, some societies, especially way back, there was, like, men with a thousand wives, but I didn't realize that there were just oh. people in temples. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, yeah, well, now you know. Though. Well, now you yeah. know. There are just people with slightly bigger than couples. <laughs> like, I, I, for me, like, it was, like, I never yeah, really too. thought about it in media. Like, oh, yeah, let's put, instead of two of these characters together, let's put three of them together. Like, that, that just doesn't, like, spark in my head. You know what I mean? I mean like, there, in terms of romantically, like. Are there yeah. any other fans that, like, casually ship more than two characters together, like, the amphibia fandom has? Uh, I'm 100% sure that, like, uh, but, like, I don't know. Oh, no. Off the top of my head. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Um, that's something I wanted to mention. Um, like, in a post Korra, post Steven Universe world, like, being a ship like, um, like, for, for example, I don't know, Lumity, like, that's still, you know, that's still fairly surprising, but it's not like the biggest absolute shock in the world, but a poly ship that is all girls, that, 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 that's insane. That is actually, frankly, unheard of. I've never seen that. I've never seen any fandom have a poly ship be like, quote unquote, the, you know, the main ship, the most popular like one. Something like very casually, like, accepted. Yeah. It's so cool that people just kind of came together for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... It's just no, no, maybe one day we'll get, like, an actual poly ship in a kid's cartoon, and it'll be, like, like the, the aura like holding hand chair. scene or something. Oh, like, Amphibia's gonna be compared to, like, the holding hands in like, Korra. Like... I don't think Amphibia will be it just Oh my god, I can see it happening. Amphibia is very fan of It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It would just be a big step forward to like see it in an in a, like actually see it in the show in a show's canon. Yeah. Okay, I think we. Yeah. I think we discussed like every every ship, <laughs> amphibia. That's finally done it. And okay, I think I know Sunstri mentioned like we can we can also talk about like fandom stuff regarding it now the, the reason i, I want to keep like that we... at the end is because like this was a this is currently like a three-hour recording but like i don't i don't mind continuing for like a bit more <laughs> like i guess we did hit most of the fam so i think sunstream you you wanted to like talk about like other stuff yeah. too uh, oh no i was just talking about what i've already done just then oh sorry Okay. Yeah, I felt like we hit, like, I feel like we've been talking about the fandom, like, the, yeah, whole, like time the whole time. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm not really sure what to to add that I didn't say. Like, I feel like shipping is, like, fandom culture, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. Actually talk about it. Like, I can't think of anything else to talk about the ships. For. I mean, we could talk about shipping discussion. In regards to like discussion of the show in general, um, <laughs> I feel like I, I, I'm. I feel like most shipping discussion in Fidia, like, I mean, obviously, most shipping discussion for the in Fidia is mostly about the, you know what I mean? Like, all the other ships are kind of like around. You know, like, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, the Sasha and Artsy and all the variations. The ships that talk, that we talk about the most, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't really know what to add to that. <laughs> I mean, I think the but only like, thing I'm thinking about was, like, when we were discussing, when we were doing, like, episode discussions, like, throughout like the, the duration of the podcast. It's like I I think 
I, I was definitely like, I was very hesitant to talk about shipping stuff because like, it was more about like the fandom's like interpretation of it instead of like the actual discussion of the show itself. Which I think, like looking back, like I, I don't, I don't regret kind of like making that suggestion when we, when we go into these episodes discussing it. I, I know there's like time. I know there was like times where we're like, we really couldn't avoid it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad we had like a different, like a separate segment, like focused on it, because I do feel like. I mean, Nick and I have vented about this before, like, on the podcast. I think it was, like, after the, like, after the finale, where it's, like, a lot of this, like, a lot of the community, like, you know, talks about the dynamic between the, tre- the between Sasha and Marcy and Anne. It's, like, and, like, I, <laughs> I mean, a lot of it is about shipping, and that's fine. And it's like... Yeah. You... And then... Oh, man, I'm, try, I'm trying my, I'm trying my best to be, like... <laughs> 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 like... <laughs> mm. Trying to figure out what you're trying to say. <laughs> it's like... You know, there are, like... There are times where it's like, I, it's like, I think all of you have, like, I know all of you have had the experience where it's like, you go into, like, a discussion for Amphibia on whatever platform you're on, and, like, you're bombarded with mostly, like, shipping stuff, and you're like... And the same, t- and because there's like new fans coming, coming like new fans coming on, it's like they're discovering certain, they're discussing things about the show that you've already heard, and then like it keeps yeah. happening, <laughs> and then it's like you you kind of think you're like I wish I could talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, okay. like. I, I felt like a lot of shipping talk. Okay, so like when going into like the main server and like going on like maybe like the Reddit or something, I I see what you mean because I feel like with I don't know maybe it was just like the people I was talking with, it always felt like shipping like what's the word like I never felt like I had like a unless I was talking with like people I like I know know. Like, I never felt like I had a super, like, interesting, like, discussion about about shipping before. Like, I feel like every single time I, I talk, I hear a discussion about it, it is kind of repetitive. You have people kind of mention the same scenes. Over, and, like... And it's natural. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And it's, like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I feel like people are going in circles a little bit. Especially, like, if... On the Discord, it would be like constantly, like someone would mention Sasha, and then it would just kind of go into this spiral of like there would be like a non shipper and then a shipper go on. I would just spin them to shut up so that I could talk, and then <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, let's be real here there's a lot of people on the Discord. Like, this, I'd say that's far more a symptom of just having new people be there and having just kind of a churn of each other plenty of other people discovering this and having a wonderful moment going oh my goodness look at this i wanting to share it with 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 everybody around them that they know who enjoys the show and those kinds of nice moments as opposed to like repetition because there's nothing more to say so i wouldn't hang on to that kind of thing too much Okay. I'm gonna be I mean, honest. You go ahead first. Oh, I mean, I was just gonna say. Plus, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the thing of like ship, shipping stuff is that I think like 
feel like the discussion always just inevitably, you know, has the same end goal, right? Because it's always just like, is the ship proven to be real, yes or no? And like, that's kind of like the question every week. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's just, that's like kind of like where the conversation ends. Like, you know, every time when it comes to ship talk, like, is it real? And then it's just like, I'm not even talking about like the fact of the debate. I just mean like, if you're like, it's just, it, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like, if, I don't know. And I, say, I think part of the cycle, it's like, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Nick. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, that's all I got. That's all I can say. Like, I, I think I understand where everyone's coming from with like huh. uh, the discussions of like shipping on the server. I just, I guess I'm, I'm not trying to like even talk about the debates right now. It's just like, I feel like what makes, I guess what makes them repetitive is just like, what is there to talk about beyond just whether or not like it's confirmed in that episode? Because I feel like it's like, I guess you can talk about how the, how the relationship, how the dynamics is developing, but like, as a romantic relationship, I feel like it's just like, I don't know, yes or no in the end, but I have no clue. Honestly, that, that's yeah. all I got. So I think uh, what you're missing there is that the, ship, the shipping itself is not about what happens in canon. It's about coming up with AUs, coming up with uh, your own fan original, uh, fan content about these ships. And then you talk about that and you yeah. explore other possibilities, not what's directly in canon, because that's not really the realm of all of these ships which are definitively non-canon and everybody knows yeah. that and everybody accepts that and still comes up with oh hey but like what if this happens and we could make what about this drama or this opportunity for some like real fluff pieces and I think that's where the bulk of ship discussion happens which tends awesome. to be in a different space than the discussions of oh hey look canon question mark question mark question mark uh, yeah so I, was, I, I, think I, that, think, I think that I think that explains Nick, oh go ahead oh, okay I'll, I'll just go right. um i think that i don't know i think that also <laughs> just explains why like i've noticed a lot of times where like it's if, it feels like a ship is so much more popular before it was actually confirmed then when it no one's actually confirmed i'm like i'm looking around i'm like hey, hey, hey where'd everybody go right <laughs> like, it's like where's all the discussion i'm like what happened here but i don't know that, that's pretty cool I think I think it also explains it. I also think like shipping is talked about differently depending on which part of the fandom you're stuck to. I I I said I kind of went into Twitter is like, at least to me, what I notice with shipping, Twitter is so like casual, in the sense. Well, okay, sometimes you get a little crazy, but like. I feel like on Twitter, there's never a discussion of, like, shipping versus non-shipping. That's never the discussion. The discussion is always more, like, in the sense of, like, exploring a dynamic that maybe isn't in the show that much, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's it's going to, a, I think, a place if you write, say, like, fan fiction, for example, or do fan art, we are going to be exploring things that are not in the show. And then, like, making content off that. That makes perfect sense. Like, to talk about, like, what if scenarios or, or, or like, thinking about this character in a romantic way so we don't see in the show, right? I think that's just kind of, like, the natural part of, like, fandom spaces that that's just going to happen. The fandom is going to focus on something that maybe the show doesn't go in, like, super detail about, which is probably why we talk about Sasha and Marcy all the damn time. <laughs> in the entire fandom because they aren't the focus of the show so like there's more for the fandom to leech on and talk about and since romance isn't a focus of the show for the girls um like there's more for that side of the fandom to talk about more if that makes sense like i i think when you go like i think i mentioned this like but like usually i notice in the subreddit it's like a conversation of shipping or not shipping and it's like whatever that that conversation goes in loop. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, yeah, like it's. I think it depends on where you're talking about, and I think it talk, it depends on the goal of what, you're to you know. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's nice that the like that people in the fandom like have like get a lot of enjoyment out of the trio, like. It's like 
it's like the show itself like kind of just like gave like a blueprint not a blueprint just gave them like basic tools and like the fandom was like like a really solid foundation for fans to like make their own head head cannons in slash rc which had like barely content it kind of that made everyone like it more in their own way because then they get to fill in the blanks and they know that they've got this close relationship, but they get to decide on what terms. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's because, like, the fandom, like, enjoys, like, mining gold from that aspect so much. It's like, when I see something more closer to, like, closer to the actual, like, show, and by that I mean, like, when I see the other, like, frog amphibian characters show up in, like, a fanfic, I'm like, yo, they exist here! <laughs> like... Like, there's this, like, really, there's this really good, like, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot his name, it's like D... I think it was DTF? Or... Oh, yeah, 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 the guy making a uh, sequel series. Yeah, a sequel Comic series. Script. And, like, he's in the prologue, oh, yeah. and it's, like, f- like, 50 pages of just, like, the girls going back to Amphibia, and it's just <laughs> the girls, and I think maybe Mag- like Maddie. I'm like, I mean, yeah, this is great. I'm like, oh, it's a 50-page prologue. Like, oh, like where's like where, where are the other characters like, i mean like it's still great it's just, like i'm like i enjoy it too yeah it's here's, here's a lesson for you to learn web comics move very slowly <laughs> like and just in terms of the amount of story you can fit on a single page is a lot smaller than the amount of story you can fit in like a fraction of an episode, but it's like, so, it's like yeah, it's like all these, all these head, like all these, like fa- all these fanfics are great. And like, I mean, I'm just thinking like, I can't wait for other amphibians to show up. Like, I mean, this is still great. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just looking forward. Like, I'm just looking forward to the the day where like, you know, I have a house and kids and and like I have like a like a comfy retirement and finally like. Being able to enjoy like a fan, a good fanfic with like amphibians in it. Don't worry. At some point in time, in the next century, somebody will write a fanfic with Brick as the main character. <laughs> okay, Sunsuri. Let, let's not let's not get too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm just I'm actually no, I'm not messing with you. This is, this is I actually think this, <laughs> but that's a battle for another day. <laughs> yeah, actually, King of the Uzbeks has a great, uh, like, Hop Hop story when he dies. Like, like <laughs> Hop Hop in the afterlife. Yeah, that one. The Paradise Misplaced. Yeah, that one's great. I need to read more. I need to read more Amphibia fanfics. Like, you guys always make, or you guys always remind me that I don't do that enough. Like, Oh, there are some good uh, ones. There's out some there. good ones, yeah. The one thing, one I thing always enjoy the fix. The one thing I'm sad about in, like, in terms of like shipping environments and the shipping communities is that I kind of wish people could talk about ships the way they talk about the rest of shows. It feels yes. to me that much of shipping huh. is like. This pairing is best, this pairing is canon, and not like, what if we explored if this ship had this happen to it? Like, I feel like the best place to find that is fan fiction, but like, even so, it's like such a smaller amount of the discussion compared to just wider fandom stuff. And like, if I say, oh, hey, what if, you know, Sasha and Ann got together canon or something, how would that go? Like, to just explore it, it's going to be seen as very taboo and gross and icky because. But hey, Sasha sucked, and it's like, yeah, I'm aware. Ooh. It's about yeah. it's about the intrigue. This bad stuff happens in fiction. That's what fiction is about. It's about exploring hypotheticals. Ooh, like that's that's sort of so. Like my personal preference when going, I want it like I usually like stuff being at least close to canon, 
You know what I mean? I want to get this person, like, how do you think about the show? And, like, what is your analysis of these characters? So, like, one of the things I don't like with, like, shipping in general is, like, if you change, like, I know everyone has different interpretations of fashion, which is great. Like, not everyone's going to have the same thought process of these characters that I do. But I'm not really the biggest fan of, like, changing the characters to make the relationship work, if that makes sense. Like, I have the example just in my but, like, 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 I feel like Marcy is always, like, treated as the character to be coddled a lot of the time in a relationship. And, like, the whole show is saying that Marcy is just as capable as, as Anne or Sasha, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's, that's like, a super-duper nitpick. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I, I don't know. Common term is flanderization when like some characteristic yeah. of a character gets way overplayed to the point where it starts to feel out of character. Yeah. Which then again, you know, again, like different interpretations of the character. Yeah. It's also true that like a lot of romance falls into tropes, which tropes can be very fun, but you take two characters and kind of shove them into the meat grinder and push them out into the little, like, um, implied, like, regular slots that they're supposed to fall in if two characters are in this type of trope. Like, calling Sash Arcee Jock X Nerd isn't inaccurate, but it also, like, removes the nuance of the fact that Sasha was technically the, like, Queen Bee back home, and although she's, like, buff, her, her thing isn't really, I am Jock. Yeah. Meanwhile, that was kind of Anne's job, to be honest. They had the, the jock nerd prep thing going on. Yeah, and yeah, they don't really fit. Actually, I think Marcy kind of fits like the, the mold. The, the nerd role, but like Sasha and Anne don't really fit jock like yeah but like but i think that's what makes marcy so more, much more appealing because it's easier for to like understand her and then sasha has the intrigue and then like what and ma what makes Anne such an in interesting character is that she's kind of boring <laughs> what? No. no hold on i say this from, like, whoa, 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 you guys know i love Anne. like i like yeah. Anne's like yeah, my favorite but character, like, but it's like, it's like part of her appeal is like she's kind of like a like a lazy like like yeah. she's kind of like a. Yeah, she got a boring personality. But she's, she's not a great scared, person like, at the beginning. <laughs> no, like Anne's personality is that she like doesn't know what she is. Yeah, and doesn't know what to do. She's just, and then like that's what she's just not like. Yeah. It's like she's so directionless. Yeah. I'm like, hey, that's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, like, she's a great character. She's a great character. It's just like, you know, she's just not the most, she's not meant to have like a fully formed personality. <laughs> like at the start. At the start. At the start. And that's most yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. She's figuring herself yeah. out. She like, underestimates I, herself. And then like, because yeah. of it, she doesn't, she doesn't like really like explore everything she could do. Until much yeah. later, and she like shows her shows her full potential. Yeah, like she's not say, even. Like... But... Oh, Nick, you go, you go. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, at the start, she's not she's not the tough guy, she's not the smart guy, she's not like the leader. At the start, she's she's just like the gremlin, in, in like the back. <laughs> that's, that's that's how I always saw her. At the start, she's the one. So it was nice that the gremlin got for her own show. Got to be her own person, and I think. It's it's kind of weird, like not weird shipping Anne with Marcy and Sasha, but like the show doesn't necessarily go against like putting them together, but also like Anne becomes a better person when those two aren't around. You know what I mean? Like like I'm not trying to diss Sasha and Marcy. It's just kinda like No, but that's the point, yeah. Yeah, like, Anne becomes a better person and becomes more defined, like, 
outside of them, which I don't know. I don't hear the fandom talk of that too much, which is weird because that's kind of like a arc and whatever. But that's like that's a different diss on the fandom. I'll talk about another battle for another day. But like, yeah, like I don't know because putting like because putting Anne with like Sasha at like season one is like such like a you know. Because, like, it completely makes it so then Anne is just relying on Sasha for, like, every single little decision. She never grows as a person at the end. And then if Anne hooks up with Marcy during the show, then it's, like, then Marcy just gets to tell her what to do and she doesn't make So it's, like, not that the show is, like, denying that they can't be romantically, like, whatever, but, like, shipping them almost like in in the show itself like after the time but like it in the show itself kind of like goes against and being able to define herself out of them to her own that makes sense. so yeah oh man i i know i said we want we should wrap up but it's like the show is like they can grow apart and come back together and then like the fandom kind of like ignores the part where they where they grow apart and just focuses on the part where they come back together but it's like i understand why it's like <laughs> um like we don't see like do we see any art from like the like do we see any kind of like we don't see much from like fan content about like what the characters are up to in between that 10 year gap we just go straight from 13 oh, to 23 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah give it some it, time i know like i have seen some I, I, stuff I, I, but it's like yeah. it's, it's mostly like it's Thanks. like brief like... interactions between the trios between those 10 years that's what i've seen i've seen usually like <laughs> The interpretation at like like Sasha and Angst during high school. <laughs> I've, I've like seen that, some that kind of like Marcy um, and her experiences in a new town and trying to yeah like get into a new life kind of thing. I think I've seen some positive stuff too. Yeah, like... I, to be honest, I, I've only seen like I haven't. I the the one that stuck out to me. I think I think Uzbek wrote it. It's like Marcy becoming roommates with Luce. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, I read that one. That one was good. That one was really good. That that was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was just me like going on a tangent. But I think yeah, I think I think I'll give each of you guys like final thoughts. Um I guess personally for me it's like this this definitely deserved its own segment, this own its own discussion. I'm glad we had it. And yeah, shipping's fun. Yeah. I I enjoy it. <laughs> um, sticks. Your overall final thoughts. I mm. okay. Um, no, I guess I'm just. Happy to have fallen in love with a show whose shipping, you know, activity in terms of fandom was not absolute trash because I have been part of <laughs> fandoms that were just complete, <laughs> that they were just horrid. And I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure that I've stayed around the mostly positive spaces. Um, during mostly positive times for me to be able to say this in the first place, but honestly, I think I've had a pretty good time overall, like most of the time, in terms of shipping. And that that was really nice. Really I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Styx. Pickle, final final thoughts on shipping in the Amphibia series and community. Well, shipping can definitely be a minefield, and like talking about ship shipping in any sort of public space, 
can feel kind of like asking to get a bunch of guns pointed at you, but like Amphibia's definitely had a much better like environment for that sort of thing than I've experienced, even as someone who doesn't ship that much. Like it just it works in in its own way. Things just kind of came together properly to give it a good environment. And kind of wish more fandoms could be like Amphibia. Or to just like let shipping be shipping. And overreact to stuff all the time. Thank you, Pickle. Sunsphere, final thoughts on shipping. I'm, yeah, just glad that it went along so smoothly and everyone had a good time and everyone continues to have a good old time with it all and that we never got into stupid, stupid, crazy fights. All right. Thank you, Sun's Fury. Uh, an impact, final, final thoughts on shipping. Um, overall, I, I really liked the shipping over fandom i think we were pretty like most of the time we were we were pretty civilized with talking about it in the entire like all the realms of the fandom <laughs> so like i've always really enjoyed it i think it's a cool way of like exploring the dynamic not just the girls but all the characters in the show and i really liked it i'm glad we had like a whole discussion about like, I felt like we needed it. I think it was really, yeah, I love shipping. Very positive thing. And yeah. Thank you, Impact. And Nick, final thoughts on shipping. Nick, you there? Okay, I guess. I also want to mention how. I th I think what made it the uh I think what made the community so like lax and chill was that how well the show kind of like weaved in and out out of like actually doing like actually like giving fans or shippers like the stuff they wanted to see without it like like you can they're just so chill about it. Like I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's like, if you don't, if you, if you enjoy the show for the shipping, and if you don't, there's still like, it's like the show isn't at odds. It's isn't fighting itself to have both. It just kind of just has them. Just coexist. Yeah, they just they just peacefully yeah. coexist. It's like Amphibia's in like a constant state of like equilibrium between like the slice of life, the story, like the world building and the shipping. And like somehow we we we're still we we're all still like like I mean we have our disagreements, but it's like we we still find a way to like deal with each other. <laughs> yeah. But that concludes this week's recording, and uh, it's pretty short. Three hours and 38 minutes. <laughs> um, but next time, we'll be probably going over the Mar Marcy's Journal. Um, we'll, we, we have a rough idea how we're going to split it, and once that's out, it'll, it'll be out <laughs> eventually. Um, but the thanks for thanks for listening, everyone, and see you guys next time. Say goodbye, everyone. Peace, everybody. Bye. Yeah.